एवरीवन हेलो एवरीवन वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू गाइस प्लीज डू लेट मी नो इन द कमेंट सेक्शन वेदर आई एम ऑडिबल एंड विजिबल हेलो हेलो मैड साइको गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग डॉट फोर ओके Alright, guys. Uh, my name is Dr. Vaibhav Jain, and today I will be taking your session of anesthesia. Okay. So by now, uh, the main thing is uh, people think like anesthesia is a small subject, so we should we can like skip it. But trust me, guys. Even a single mark can uh, matter like too much. Okay. So a single mark or a single question can decide like if you are preparing for NEET PG, it can decide rest of your life, right? it can decide like 30 to 40 years of like your life right so just try to be with me for the uh, next few hours and we are going to complete the whole nst okay uh, i'm going to cover up most of the questions uh, approximately all the pyqs i will be covering okay our session will be uh, not too much long but uh, we will try to cover up everything okay it is very systemic so we will try to cover up everything okay whatever questions that has been asked in your pyqs uh, that will be covered along with the images and we are going to study in the form of a story right so how we are going to approach anesthesia is we are going to start from the introduction part then we are then we are going to uh, like what are the types of anesthesia like uh, we are having general anesthesia regional anesthesia local anesthesia then we are moving to pre anesthetic checkup okay then the patient will be going for the pre anesthetic checkup then the patient will be going for intubation and there are monitors there are anesthesia machine there is there are sim circuits and anesthetic agents and then we are going to discuss about the oxygen therapy in oxygen therapy uh, there are multiple questions in the last few years okay then we are going to study about the fluids and then some miscellaneous topics like bls and scls okay so guys let's start the session everything is clear okay okay i will i will do in hindi as well okay hindi english dono chalega okay all right so uh, starting off with the question can you guys answer world anesthesia day is celebrated on answer in the comment section world anesthesia day is celebrated on anyone b how many says a b c 16 is okay but 16 what october very good pushkar it is 16th of october okay let's come to the question number second who coined the term anesthesia who coined the term anesthesia how many says a b c d very nice it is oliver wendell holmes so in the introduction part we are going to study about the some historical aspects okay so earlier uh, you guys know that uh, surgery is a older branch right and earlier there were uh, no anesthesia right anesthesia is a newer branch so there was a scientist whose name is horace wells he thought well about the people isne kya socha isne acha socha logo ke bare mein theek hai he tried to develop anesthesia okay he was the pioneer he was the first person to try to develop anesthesia he used nitric oxide okay and he tried this in 1845 okay but unfortunately he failed so what happened then the next scientist came that is wtg morton okay wtg morton is also known as the father modern father of anesthesia he experimented something he experimented with the ether he used anesthetic agent as a ether 
and he demonstrated successfully the use of ether as an anesthetic agent okay this was the case okay is wtg morton wtg morton he described the anesthesia okay he demonstrated for the first time okay so that was the successful demonstration on which date it was it was 16th of october 1845 1846 sorry. and it is it is celebrated as world anesthesia right okay while he was uh, demonstrating about the anesthesia there were another scientist who was standing there his name was oliver wendell holmes okay he was standing there and he gave the term anesthesia he saw something and he thought this is like uh, something so he gave the uh, term anesthesia the meaning of anesthesia is no sensations okay meaning of anesthesia is no sensation okay then one more scientist is left that is john snow what do you know about john snow anyone john snow is considered as the father of epidemiology you already know that so kya bhi bolte hain father of epidemiology okay but he was a practicing he was a practicing anesthesiologist okay he did the fire he gave the spinal anesthesia to queen victoria okay in 1853 so he was also considered as the father of anesthesia he was considered as the father of anesthesia okay in the delivery of uh, like queen victoria's eighth child leopold that time he gave the spinal regional anesthesia okay till now what we have learned till now he is the wtg morton wtg morton is the father modern just remember like that morton is the modern father of father of he demonstrated there was another scientist who was standing that is your oliver wendell holmes he was cons he gave the term anesthesia okay this one is your john snow john snow is also considered as the father of anesthesia and father of epidemiology in some books it is written now who is this gentleman he is edmund gaskin boyle gaskin Guys, he gave the Boyle's machine. Okay, he gave the Boyle's. One more scientist that you need heard that is your August Byers. He gave the regional anesthesia. Okay, I will tell you what are the different types of anesthesia. Be with me. He gave the regional anesthesia. Okay, that is also known as Byers. So. till now what we have seen we have seen about the introduction part what we have remembered till now just revise it again okay now world anesthesia day is celebrated on 16th of october 1846 first thing second thing who was hoverswells wells he tried but he failed okay father of modern father of anesthesia is wtg morton next thing who gave the term anesthesia that is your oliver wendell holmes okay and the last thing is your john snow who is also considered as father of epidemiology as well as father of anesthesia okay are we clear till now should we move ahead okay guys first part we have completed about the introduction okay introduction in introduction we have completed about the historical aspect okay now moving on to next thing that is your what are the components of anesthesia why do we need anesthesia why do we need anesthesia kyu karna hai anesthesia kyu kisi ko behosh karna hai 
okay let's look about the components of anesthesia okay first thing will be loss of consciousness what what do i want okay i want mera patient kya ho he must be unconscious first thing second thing there must be no reflex okay so loss of reflex will be there third thing i want is amnesia okay amnesia what is the meaning of amnesia that is memory loss okay memory agar memory loss nahi hoga to kya hoga what will happen he will learn surgery right next thing is your analgesia okay And the last one is your muscle relaxation okay so we are having like five components of anesthesia what are they revise with me first one first one is your loss of consciousness second one is your loss of reflex third one is your amnesia fourth one is your analgesia and the last one is your muscle relaxation okay okay guys next so all the anesthetic agents that we are using all the anesthetic agents that we are using all the anesthetic agents that has a capability to produce loss of consciousness they will produce all three things okay loss of reflex and amnesia will be there okay all anesthetic agents which can produce loss of conscious they are able to get all these three okay but the analgesic property and muscle relaxant property is not with all the anesthetic anesthetic agents we are having okay so we need to give certain drugs okay we need to give certain drugs along with the anesthetic agents okay that that is known as balanced anesthesia in balanced anesthesia we give multiple drugs multiple drug in a titrated way titrated way we give multiple drugs to achieve that valence anesthesia term was given by john tundi and pal milton they coined the term balanced anesthesia okay samajh mein aaya there are two things first thing is your what are the components of anesthesia what is a balanced anesthesia okay balanced anesthesia we are giving multiple drugs in a titrated way limited limited amount so that we can achieve anesthesia Who gave the term? First one scientist is the John Lundy, and second one is the Ralph Milton. Right. Moving on to next. Next is your types of anesthesia. What are the different different types of anesthesia that we are having? Okay. We are having general anesthesia. We are having regional anesthesia. We are having local anesthesia. In general anesthesia, look here, look here, guys. What is happening with the general anesthesia? The whole body is anesthetized. Okay. This one is your regional anesthesia this one is your spinal this one is your epidural this one is your peripheral block okay and local anesthesia okay let's see one by one in general anesthesia i can give types of drug i can use inhalational agent i can use iv agents i can use two types of drug in general anesthesia first one is your inhalational second one is your iv in regional anesthesia i can block i can give two types central neuroaxial blockade whatever is in the cent central neuroaxial blockade second one is your peripheral neuroaxial central neuroaxial blockade mein there will be spinal spine is in the center spinal anesthesia there will be epidural anesthesia right there will be caudal anesthesia spinal and caudal anesthesia okay we are having three things spinal epidural and caudal anesthesia in peripheral nervous block we can block brachial plexus first thing we can block brachial plexus okay we can we can block sciatic sciatic we can give sciatic block block we can give femoral block okay so basically in regional anesthesia we are blocking a region okay we can give different kind of block local anesthesia i can use topical topical i can use for the topical use second thing i can use infiltration infiltration 
okay so these are the basic basic types of anesthesia what we have seen till now we have seen okay we have seen first thing general anesthesia general anesthesia is further divided into inhalational anesthesia and iv anesthetic agents okay central neuroaxial blockade it is further divided into central central will be uh, spinal epidural and peripheral block spinal epidural and portal central will be and peripheral neural neural block will be brachial plexus sciatic or femur okay moving on to next next is your what are your steps of general anesthesia okay general anesthesia mein steps kya kya hote okay so start karte hain sabse pehle first thing will be pre oxygenation pre oxygenation okay why do we pre oxygenate our patients anyone first thing is pre oxygenation second thing will be induction third thing will be maintenance maintenance and the last thing will be reversal okay reversal so these are the four steps of general anesthesia why do we pre oxygenate our patients we are pre oxygenating our patients for 3 to 5 minutes with 100% of oxygen okay so if there is any mishappening during the intubation or if there is difficult intubation in that case that pre oxygenation will help you that will buy you some extra time okay iski wajah se kya hoga apan ko aur time mil jayega next thing will be induction in induction what do we want we want to we want to give the patient drug so that he will be induced and the drugs we can use like thiopentan succinylcholine we can use we need to let the patient get unconscious okay second thing will be maintenance okay in maintenance i can use either i can use iv drugs either i can use inhalational agents as well okay so here i want to maintain the unconsciousness maintain the unconscious okay and the third thing will be reversal okay reversal what will happen in the reversal i will regain the consciousness okay i will regain the consciousness again okay so these are the four steps of general anesthesia okay what we have learned till now okay let's revise it again please try to answer wherever you are sitting please try to answer please try to speak with me by the end of this session we are going to revise everything everything we are going to cover here only okay so just sit like that ki yahan ka yahi yaad karte jana hai okay so first thing will be introduction in introduction we have seen about the history in the history we have learned the names of like four to five scientists first one who are swells okay bolo answer karo who are swells second one is your wtg morton he was considered as the father of modern father of anesthesia okay o w homes we need to remember about the term the term o w homes gave the term anesthesia and john snow is also considered as the father of epidemiology and father of anesthesia okay are we done till here then two more scientists we need to remember first one is your sir edmund gaskin boyl that is he gave the boyls machine okay which machine boyls machine and second one is your august byer he gave the byers block okay i will tell you what is byers block what is regional anesthesia i will tell you okay now then we have seen about the components of anesthesia like what do we want from an anesthesia these are the five basic components of anesthesia okay then we have uh, learned about the term that is balanced anesthesia kya matlab hota hai balanced anesthesia ka multiple drugs are given in a titrated form okay then we have seen about the types of anesthesia what are the different different types of anesthesia that we are having first one is your general in general the complete complete body is in the anesthetic form okay second is your regional anesthesia third one is your local anesthesia okay कब कब कौन सा यूज में लेना है आई विल टेल यू ओके आई विल टेल यू वेन टू यूज और टू यूज ओके आर यू वेज फॉलोइंग ओके नेक्स्ट थिंग इज योर 
steps of general anesthesia we have seen the multiple steps of general anesthesia that is your pre-oxygenation then we need to induce the patient then we need to maintain the patient and then we need to reverse the patient so, okay so it's like a story like uh, whenever someone is coming to you like for example if you are a surgeon like yesterday you have finished surgery uh, let's say if you are a surgeon and some patient is coming to you for uh, let's say polycystectomy okay now uh, what you will do you will not directly operate okay you will send the patient to anesthesia department okay in anesthesia department they will give you clearance okay they will give you the clearance that the patient is fit for the surgery okay and that thing is known as pre-anesthetic evaluation okay pre-anesthetic evaluation in pre-anesthetic evaluation you can see this is the form of PAC okay this is the form of PAC in pre-anesthetic anesthetic evaluation there are multiple things that uh, the anesthesiologist will see first thing will be history okay whenever a patient is coming to you what you will do you will take the history be it in the OPD be it in the surgery department whenever you uh, wherever you are you will take the history okay so first history that the patient uh, the anesthesiologist will take is about the history of drug that the patient is having drug allergy whether the patient is allergic to any kind of drugs or not second thing second thing will be your medication history why it is important medication history is very important because uh, the patient might be known case of hypertension he must be taking some medications for hypertension so medication history is important then we need to take surgical history like previously whether he is having any kind of surgeries or not okay and anesthesia exposure exposure history okay. in fact the name age sex everything is important for pre-anesthetic evaluation for example some diseases are like more common in females some diseases are more common in males and age is also a factor okay second thing is general physical examination okay in general physical examination that is your they will look for the pulse, blood pressure, cyanosis, what else, uh, like paler. Okay, so that is your general physical examination of the patient. Okay, now what will happen? They will do the systemic examination. Okay, in system, systemic examination, there will be examination of cardiovascular system. There will be mainly examination of respiratory system. There will be examination of CNS, your GIT okay so these are the things that we need to look for okay next thing is your investigation what are the important investigations that they will do first thing is your cbc electrolytes okay urea creatinine these are the things that will tell about the situation of the organ for example electrolyte disbalances there may be maybe uh, creatinine will tell about the kidneys of the patient okay the most important is your airway evaluation okay the pre-anesthetic uh, basically anesthesia is all about airway okay if your airway is good anesthesia will be good okay so it is all about airway okay first thing we have studied about the history second thing is your general physical examination third thing is your systemic examination last one is your investigations okay investigations moving on to ASA grading okay what is ASA grading this is the grading that we do for the comorbidities okay this is a grading that will dictate about the disease in the patient okay patient ko kya disease ho sakta hai okay ye kaha dekhenge hum log ASA grading mein dekhenge is mein 6 grades hum logo ko yaad karna hai we need to look for 6 grades okay first grade is your ASA 1 okay ASA 1 is normal healthy patient okay the patient is normal and healthy okay asa grade 2 will be mild systemic diseases there asa grade 3 will be severe systemic disease that is limiting the activity okay the asa 3 will be systemic disease that is limiting the activity okay asa 4 will be constant threat to life okay asa 4 will be there is a disease which is a constant threat to life okay for example let's say chf okay in asa 5 there will be more even patients okay not expected to survive for more than like 24 hours okay asa 6 will be 
organ harvesting okay organ harvesting for the brain dead patient okay so these are the six grades that will tell us about the situation of the patient okay suppose i am an anesthesiologist i will be i will be writing something on a paper i will be giving to the i will be giving this thing to the surgeon okay surgeon what what he will see he will see asa1 okay so you will think like uh, this condition is okay patient is okay i can operate easily but in the same scenario if the patient is of the asa4 grade that will be difficult he need to get the blood and all those things done okay so he need to be a little more careful okay so that is your pac pre anesthetic checkup okay one more grading system is there these are for the elective surgeries elective surgeries okay and this one for emergency service uh, emergency sur surgeries we are having 1e 2e 3e like that only okay e will be added okay so that is your that is your uh, asa grading okay let's let's revise again okay what we have seen pac pac the patient is coming to anesthesiologist now anesthesiologist will be writing something on a paper and he will be giving to the like orders and he will be giving that information to the surgeon he will be giving clearance to the surgeon okay now we have seen about the comorbidities based on the medication history also we can see that okay next thing is your airway okay this is very important multiple questions in the recent examination from this topic okay that is known as mallam patti grading okay what is this known as mallam patti grading in mallam patti grading we will be assessing the size of tongue assessing the size of tongue with respect to oral cavity okay with respect to oral cavity look here guys class 1 is there in class 1 what we will see we will see all the structure we can see soft palate we can see hard palate we can see uvula we can see social pillars and we everything is visible right so this is your class one that will be easy intubation okay class two will be soft palate is visible uvula is visible forces is visible okay that will be your class two in class three only soft palate and the base of uvula is visible look here only base is visible along with the soft palate okay and in class four there will be only hard palate hard palate is only visible okay so that is indicated of class 3 and class 4 are indicated of difficult intubation okay difficult intubation what will happen in class 3 and class 4 there will be difficulty in, in the intubation okay it is not too much we are going to cover everything uh, we are going to cover everything till the end of the class and we are going to revise everything okay next one is your cormac lehan grading okay in cormac lehan grading guys this is a laryngoscopic this is a laryngoscopic grading of glottic Talking. Okay, this is the laryngoscopic grading of glottic opening. Okay, grade one will be open. Everything is visible. I can easily intubate. Grade two is I can easily intubate. Grade three and grade four will be considered again as a difficult intubation. Okay, this will be considered again as a difficult intubation. Okay, right. So these are all the classes now we have seen about the airway let's move on to pre anesthetic order okay now patient will ask sir uh, you have taken my history now uh, i'm taking like some drugs uh, should i continue all those drugs or should i stop some drugs so that will be considered under the pre anesthetic order if the patient is smoking we need to tell the patient to stop the smoking okay for example someone is coming for elective surgery i will like i will say like come after two months okay just please try to smoke stop the smoking okay next thing is hrt hormone replacement therapy and herbal medication we don't know what is in the herbal medication hrt is high dose of estrogen and progesterone so we need to stop it when we need to stop it six to eight weeks prior again six to eight weeks prior 
tricyclic antidepressant we need to just remember like t for three 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 weeks okay remember like that t is three weeks prior to surgery ticlopidine you can remember like ticlopidine is also 13 14 approximately 13 14 days you need to stop okay clopidogrel is five to seven days you need we need to stop it five to seven days next one is your warfarin warfarin is stopping four days before okay next one is your lithium lithium is 24 to 48 hours prior to surgery okay what about heparin we can stop the heparin 12 to 24 hours before the surgery and an unfractionated heparin six hours before the surgery okay so what we have studied till now we need to stop the smoking eight weeks this one is six to eight weeks tca t4 3 okay t4 3 Eclopidine 13 14 okay clopidogrel 5 to 7 warfarin is 4 lithium is 24 to 48 hours heparin is 12 to 24 hours and unfractionated heparin is 6 hours before the surgery okay what about oral hypoglycemic agents oral hypoglycemic agents guys we need to stop because the patient is coming empty stomach so we need to omit the last dose omit the last dose and if surgery is going to be for longer period of time we need to shift the patient to insulin we need to shift the patient to insulin okay what about antihypertensive drugs antihypertensive drugs for antihypertensive drugs we need to we need to continue the antihypertensive drugs except as inhibitor or arb what about aspirin aspirin low dose aspirin low dose aspirin we can continue that is also known as baby aspirin baby aspirin we can continue conventional dose we need to stop okay what about thyroid medication we can continue we can continue the thyroid medication okay so these are the medications that uh, we need to look for okay next one is your npo orders what i will i will tell the patient to come empty stomach before the surgery okay if patient is a adult male i will tell to take the full fatty meals eight hour before the surgery okay if next day is coming to surgery okay second thing is your semi-solid food like gully or mess to something like fruits okay that will be six hours prior to surgery and patient can take clear fluid like two hours before the surgery okay for pediatric patients same thing goes fatty meals will be eight hours again formula milk or semi-solid will be six hours but breast milk will be four hours and clear fluid will be two hours same okay so that is your npo orders now what is happening the patient is coming to us for pac look here guys what we are doing the patient is coming to us for pre-anesthetic checkup okay in pre-anesthetic checkup we have seen the patient everything we have seen we have seen the history we have seen general physical examination systemic examination we have done we have find out that patient is having such kind of comorbidities we have written the ASA grading we have written the malam patti grading okay now we are we are sending the patient to home with a pre-anesthetic order we have we have tell the patient like what drug you should not take what drug you should avoid okay we have given the NP orders now patient is going home okay next day next time whenever the patient will come to you the patient will come to surgery okay next time the patient will be coming to surgery in surgery patient will be requiring some pre-operative medications yani abhi tumhara patient kya hoga wo tumhare paas mein OT mein hai. patient is coming to OT okay now what will happen he will be requiring some drugs he must be anxious right he must be anxious so he must be taking any kind of drugs right what is this this is your anxiolytics okay what is this drug that is your anxiolytics anxiolytics are your benzodiazepines we can give like midazolam okay midazolam or clonazepam or drugs like that diazepam and all okay then we need to give some anti-emetic drugs why we need emetic drugs so patients will be decreased and patient cannot vomit out because during surgery or after surgery or before surgery if it tries to vomit out what will happen the content can go into the 
uh, airway and he can aspirate right so we can give 5 ht 3 blocker or we can give metaclopramide okay metaclopramide is a prokinetic drug that will be increasing the movements right m uh, 5 ht 3 blockers like ondan cetron okay next thing we can give antacids or we can use ppi as well antacids and ppi anti cellulox cellulogus drugs these are your glycopyrrolate okay, glycopyrrolate why glycopyrrolate is important it will decrease the secretion okay, it will decrease the secretions during intubation if it will decrease the secretion what will happen i can easily intubate okay and then we need to give antibiotics when we should administer antibiotic one hour prior to incision what kind of antibiotics should i use that will be your broad spectrum antibiotics broad spectrum antibiotics okay so answer this question guys look here Forty year old male patient comes to hospital for cholecystectomy. He was sent for PAC in his checkup. Everything was normal except his malampati grading. Okay, which was grade four. A good malampati score is helpful in the which of the following procedure? Okay. Answer guys, answer karo. Malampati grade is 4. Now, this is for very nice darshan, very nice try. It is for the intubation. Okay, this is for the intubation, right? This is for the intubation. Okay, grade 4, grade 4 is difficult intubation. Okay, and Malampati score is for the intubation, not for the tracheostomy, not for cholecystectomy, not for dressing. Okay, question number 2. A five month old baby was planned for a surgery. What advice should be given by the doctor to the patient? Very nice, very nice. A five month old baby was planned for a surgery. What advice should be given by a doctor to the patient? Kya bolega? NPO for 14 hours? Breast milk by 4 hours? Can have meal anytime? Or fatty meals? Four hours prior to surgery. So the answer will be breast milk by four hours. Okay, very good, Bhavnesh. Answer will be four hours. Okay. Tell me this question, which of the following drugs can be used as a pre-anesthetic medication to decrease the salivary sickly issue without? Konsi konsi dawaiya hum log use kar sakte to decrease the salivary secretions. Popolamine, atropine, lorazepam, glycopyrrolate. Glycopyrrolate. What if the question says except? Remember, all these three are anticholinergic drugs. Popolamine is an anticholinergic drug. Atropine is also an anticholinergic drug. Glycopyrrolate is an anticholinergic drug. Okay. All these three will be decreasing the secretions. Okay, anticholinergic ka function kya hota hai? It will be decreasing the secretion, right? So all these three will be decreasing the secretions, but specifically we are using glycopyrrolate. Not lorazepam. So uh, if except is written here, the answer will be lorazepam. Okay. Next thing. Since now we are done with the. Ek bar dekh lete, tak ho gaya. Then we are moving on to next. First thing we have done with the introduction part. Second thing we are done with the types of anesthesia. Now you know the types of anesthesia, general, regional and local. Third thing we are done with the pre-anesthetic checkup. Okay. In pre-anesthetic checkup, we have sent the patient home. Okay. 
now next thing is your intubation next thing is your intubation airway device okay now the patient has come to our op a patient is lying down now we need to intubate the patient we will look around certain kind of machines over there okay so first thing we need to intubate the patient for intubation what do i need for intubation guys anyone intubation kaise karenge with the help of laryngoscope okay first thing i need is laryngoscope second thing i need certain kind of airway devices right what are the airway devices that you know for example this is your trachea okay whatever devices that are working above this glottis this is known as supraglottic airway devices whatever devices which are working below this these are known as infraglottic airway devices okay we are having certain kind of devices first one is your supraglottic airway devices second one is your infraglottic airway devices okay one more uh, we need to study about the airway adjuncts as well we are having these things okay supraglottic airway devices these are your laryngeal laryngeal mask airway okay infraglottic devices will be your et tubes and adjuncts will be they will be helping okay so it can be oropharyngeal it can be nasopharyngeal oropharyngeal we are having like goodell's airway goodell's okay. nasopharyngeal tubes we are having np tube let's see one by one okay first let's talk about laryngoscopes okay can anyone tell me what are these laryngoscopes this one is can anyone tell me which is this laryngoscope this laryngoscope is this is your mccoy mccoy laryngoscope okay this one is straight blade that is your millers okay this one is curved blade this one is known as macintosh okay this one is your video laryngoscopy video laryngoscope this one is your fiber optic micro fiber optic laryngoscope okay how do we identify this this part is known as handle this part is known as blade okay this one is extra lever if there is extra lever in the laryngoscope we call it mccoy how to identify mccoy mein kya hoga there will be a extra lever okay that is your mccoy laryngoscope straight blade agar hai if there is straight blade it is miller's laryngoscope if it is curved blade remember c4 curved c4 macintosh okay, you can remember like that curved blade. okay millers will be straight okay l straight okay video laryngoscope you can see it on the camera and this one is your fiber optic laryngoscope useful in difficult airway intubation okay so these are the laryngoscope okay ye laryngoscope se what i will do i will i will put the laryngoscope and i will see the glottic opening okay glottic opening dekhing is next thing laryngoscope we are done with the laryngoscope next thing will be laryngeal mask airways okay next thing will be laryngeal mask airways these are your laryngeal mask airway devices or lmas okay what are lmas laryngeal mask airway devices and how we are using it okay first thing identify the structures okay first one it is already written first one is your classical second one is your fast track third one is your pro seal okay chalo ye bata do this one is your lma supreme okay this one is your i gel and this one is your lma how to remember i will tell you 
this one is classical there will be only single single opening okay if there is single opening it is a first generation airway device in fast track how we are using fast track for intubation okay we are putting putting the airway then we are using for the intubation okay in fast track you will see this handle like thing okay if handle is present that is your fast track element it's the use care the use of fast track element will be putting the tubes okay et tubes ke saath mein hum log we can insert the et tubes along with it okay there will be two opening yahan par two opening hogi there will be two opening so it is a second generation device third will be pro seal pro seal will also be having two two openings right next thing will be supreme how to identify supreme there will be tab okay yahan par kya hoga fixation tab hoga that will be dividing into two part okay that is your lms supreme and igl will be different different colors there will be no no wall okay no pilot pilot nahi hoga yahan par jaise pilot hai there will be no pilot okay this one will be green green sa jo dikh raha hai that is your lma ambu okay yaad hua what we have seen we have seen six type of lma devices classical fast track this one is your pro seal this one is your supreme this one is igl and the last one is lma ambu okay Let's talk about the endotracheal tubes. What are the endotracheal tubes that we need to look for? Okay, first thing, first thing that we need to look for your B well ending. B well ending must be there. Second thing will be Murphy's eye. Okay, there will be an extra opening that is known as Murphy's eye. It was a question. Murphy's eye is present in which uh, which instrument? Okay, so it was present in ET tubes. Okay, what is the function? Is me say kya hoga? There will be extra amount of air will be passing okay agar yahan se aage se block ho gaya if it is blocking from the front then also there will be oxygen okay it is cuffed okay we are having two types of uh, et tubes first one is cuffed second one is uncuffed uncuffed tubes are used in children okay pediatric patients mein hum log kaun si tube use mein lete hain that is uncuffed to prevent subglottic stenosis here it is written diameter of the tube okay number yahan likha hoga that will be numbering okay that is a simple et that is your simple et your tracheal tube okay this one is your ra ra e tube ra your ring a dish alvin tubes ra e tubes okay this is of two types do tarike ki hogi first thing you need to look for if they are on the both on the same side same side will be south facing okay that will be south facing okay south ka hota south will be below north will be above okay so if tube is coming above it is north tube if tube is going below it is south tube okay iska opening will be different okay this will be in the different direction it will be in the same direction same will be south okay this one is a red rubber tube this one is a red rubber tube we are using in co2 laser surgery okay this one is the same re tubes now we are having these tubes these are your flex so metallic tube kaun si tube se these are your flex so metallic are your flexo metal right they are kink resistant matlab kya hoga kink resistant ka matlab kya hota hai agar aapne move kiya that will be okay okay no problem they will be used in neurosurgery surgery like agar utta leta hua to dekh that will not be a problem okay this one is your kaun se ye batao that is your double human is your double lumen double lumen so double lumen tube. where do we use double lumen tube double lumen tubes are used in when we require one lung ventilation okay we need to perform a surgery for a single lung okay one lung surgery karna hai what do we use we can use double lumen tubes this one is your bhogi guys what it will do it will facilitate the et tube in insertion okay et tube insertion and this one is your stylet ye bhi wahi use 
stylet okay stylet and boogie are we done with this okay guys so these are your airway airway devices infra glute okay next one is your airway adjuncts what the what are the adjuncts that we are using first one is your that is your what is it it is your goodles airway doubling is for goodles your goodles airway okay how we are using it we are putting it the, uh, the tip will be facing the facing the roof of the mouth then we are rotating it in. okay kitna rotate karna hai 180 degree okay how do we check check for the size we will check for the size with the angle of mouth to the angle of mandible okay kitna rakhna hai angle of mouth se angle of mandible tak rakhna hai from the angle of mouth to the angle of mandible look here okay this one is your goodles airway this is your oropharyngeal devices oropharyngeal devices next one is your nasopharyngeal devices nasopharyngeal devices okay isme tube dalna hai tube ka size hum log kaise assess karenge how we will check we will check from the ala of nose ala of nose to tip of ear lobule okay ala of from the ala of nose to tip of air lobule that is how we are checking the size of nasopharyngeal tubes okay nasopharyngeal tubes so these are the airway adjuncts that we have studied till now what we have seen our patient has come to our patient has come to uh, ot okay in the ot we need to intubate the patients first thing we need to have a laryngoscope now we have understood about the types of laryngoscope we are having different different types of laryngoscope for example it, if it is a like a small baby or a children what we will do we will use straight blade laryngoscope that is known as miller's laryngoscope if it is a adult person we can use macintosh okay so laryngoscope we have seen second thing second thing will be airway devices we are having certain different kind of airway devices first one is your laryngeal mask airway second one is your et tubes third one is your oropharyngeal and nasopharyngeal airway devices okay ET tubes we have seen <coughs> different different kind of ET tubes laryngeal mask airway also we have seen okay now what we need to do we need to intubate our patient okay abhi kya karna hai patient ko intubate karna hai okay guys to patient ko intubate kaise karenge how we are intubating the patient so just tell me the answer of this question answer batao which of the following statement is false regarding the intubation okay first thing the position will be morning sniffing position flexion of neck second thing introduce laryngoscope from the uh, right hand third option push the tongue away and see epiglottis and then visualize the glottic opening next thing is your introduce et tubes and inflate the cuff and the last thing is your check for bilateral breath sounds aur uske baad mein last thing is your fixation of the et tubes okay so what do you think which uh, which of the statement is false which of the following statement is false anyone anyone at psycho e kumar what else anyone else morning sniffing position flexion of neck look here guys i i want to know the wrong statement okay which statement is wrong first statement says morning sniffing position or you can say barking dog position we can we can use the barking dog position second thing flexion of neck neck will be flexed right introduce the laryngoscope from the right hand are you sure uh, we introduce the laryngoscope from the right hand we will take the laryngoscope in the left hand we will put like this okay in the left hand in the right hand we are having et tube what we will do we will separate the tongue then we need to put the et tube from the right hand okay so this one statement is the wrong statement okay so what what should be here it should be left hand okay always always 
फुट लेरिंगोस्कोप को कहाँ कैसे पकड़ोगे लेरिंगोस्कोप को पकड़ोगे हमेशा लेफ्ट हैंड में ठीक इधर लेफ्ट हैंड और उसके बाद में क्या करोगे अंदर डालना है ठीक है नेक्स्ट थिंग इज योर पुश द टंग अवे क्या करना है उसके बाद में टंग को अवे करना है सी द एपिग्लोटिस वैन यू सी द ओपनिंग ऑफ द एपिग्लोटिस देन यू विल सी द ग्लोटिक ओपनिंग उसके बाद में ग्लोटिक ओपनिंग देखने के बाद में क्या करना है ईटी ट्यूब को आपको अंदर डालना है यू नीड टू पुट द ईटी ट्यूब देन यू नीड टू इंफ्लेट द ईटी ट्यूब ओके एंड देन यू विल चेक फॉर द बायोलेटर ब्रेथ साउंड एंड देन यू विल फिक्स द ट्यूब ओके लास्ट थिंग विल बी फिक्सिंग ऑफ द ट्यूब बट इफ देर इज डिफिकल्ट इंटीबेशन वी कैन यूज सर्टन मैनवर्स फर्स्ट वन दीज आर दी वाई क्यूज दैट हैज कम इन योर एग्जाम फर्स्ट वन इज योर हेड टिल्ट एंड चिल लिफ्ट पोजिशन ओके हेड इज टिल्टिंग योर Look here, head is tilting and chin is lifting. Okay, so this is your head tilt, chin lift uh, position. That will be for the visualization of the glottic opening. Second one is your jaw thrust. Okay, jaw thrust. Kis me karna hai? We need to do for the trauma patient. In trauma patients, we cannot do head lift and uh, sorry, head tilt and chin lift position. Okay, we need to do the jaw thrust. Okay, third one is your selex maneuver. This this one is a selex maneuver. what we are doing we are we are trying to uh, prevent the aspiration with the, we are pushing the pressure on the cricoid cartilage okay by pushing the pressure on the cricoid cartilage we are collapsing the esophagus basically okay so that will be preventing the preventing the aspiration and that maneuver is known as selex maneuver okay selex maneuver identify the given devices below what of what answer karo guys identify the given device below ओके इज इट अ क्लासिकल लरेंजियल एयरवे इज इट अ प्रोसील एल एम ए इज इट आई जी एल और इज इट अल एम ए सुप्रीम वो डू यू थिंक रिमेंबर आई हैव टोल्ड यू बताओ वॉट इज दिस This device is eye gel. Okay, eye gel. Remember, I have told you eye gel. Classical me there will be only single tube. Pro seal we have seen. Pro seal jo niche rakha hua tha and L M A supreme will be. There will be. Kya hoga L M A supreme me? Bataya tha bhi do tube hogi there bhi. Okay, that will be your L M A supreme. That will be your pro seal. Okay, and this one is your classical. Okay, classical will be single tube will be there. In pro seal it is large okay two tubes will be there here okay this one is your supreme supreme me kya hoga fixation tabs honge okay this one is your eye gel eye gel there will be no pilots okay are we clear very nice very nice vinoto jaya gopal very nice sai next one Till now, what we have done, we have sedated our patient. Our patient lying down on the bed. Now we have seen some structures. First thing is a monitor. So, what did you see there? There are monitors. Okay. What are the monitors that we need to study? We are having two standard guidelines. First one is standard first. That there should be an anesthetic. Uh, there should be a registered anesthetics must be there. Second thing is. Standard two that that says five mandatory monitors should be there. Five mandatory monitors should should be there. Okay, what are these five mandatory monitors? Look here, guys. This is the monitor. First thing is your ECG. Okay. Second thing is your SpO two. SpO two is pulse oximetry. Okay. Third thing will be your capnography. Third thing will be your capnography. Okay. Fourth thing will be NIBP non invasive blood pressure monitoring. क्या करना है BP लेना है ठीक है and the last thing will be temperature okay temperature manage karna hai temperature dekhna hai kitna hai okay so these are the five mandatory monitors repeat after me first one is your first one is your ecg second one is your spo2 third one is your capnography fourth one is your nibp and the last one is your temperature probe okay temperature probe so first ecg we are using two leads Lead number two and lead number five. Lead number two is for the purpose of identification of arrhythmias. Arrhythmias. Okay. Lead number five is for the MI, myocardial infarction. Okay. SpO two. SpO two is pulse oximetry. It is based on the Beer-Lambert's law. 
or law of plethysmography. It is based on the uh, two laws. First one is your Beer Lambert law, and second one is your law of plethysmography. Okay, NIBP we are using, uh, we are having uh, like invasive BP monitoring as well, but we use in like neurosurgeries or where uh, in those surgeries where anticipated blood doses more. Okay, next one is your temperature. Okay, for temperature, uh, the gold standard or most sensitive will be pulmonary artery catheter okay but uh, we are using most commonly in the lower one third of esophagus we are using for the temperature purpose okay last thing will be capnography okay last thing will be capnography so these are the five mandatory monitors two more monitors that we use identify this this is your bis this is your bis monitoring also known as bi spectral index what it will indicate? It will indicate about the depth of anesthesia. I will tell you what is capnography. Depth of anesthesia. Okay. This will be telling about the depth of anesthesia. Like for example, someone is lying, a patient will be later where our patient is lying. Now what we need to do? We will see for the levels. Okay. There will be levels in the base that will be 0 to 100. Okay. We need to maintain the levels of 40 to 60 for adequate anesthesia okay that will be telling about the depth of anesthesia okay. 100 means the patient is fully awake okay zero means the patient is comatose okay okay that is your this this one is your neuromuscular monitoring this one is your neuromuscular monitoring what we will see in neuromuscular monitoring there will be there will be for the muscular blockade we are using it what is the most common nerve that we are using we are using for the ulnar nerve okay we are using for the ulnar nerve which is the most commonly used nerve okay this one is your central venous catheter okay and this one is your von gens catheter catheter this one is your swans gunge catheter that we are using for the and we are using for the pulmonary artery okay pulmonary artery this is like pulmonary okay let's talk about the capnography guys what we have seen we have seen the five mandatory monitors first one is your ECG second one is your SPO2 third one is your NIBP Fourth one is your temperature. Last one is the capnography. Now we are going to study about the capnography. Desirable monitors we have seen this and neuromuscular monitoring. This is your central line and this is the uh, Swangens catheter. Now let's talk about the capnography. Okay, in capnography, this is the CT CO2 value. What do we see? We will see the entitled CO2 values. Okay, capnography me kya hai? What study? CO2 is coming out from your lungs, we are measuring the levels of CO2, okay. So, there will be metabolism body, out of that metabolism CO2 will be generated, that CO2 coming out from your ET tube, we are, we are attaching the circuit, we are attaching the monitors, okay, and in the monitor we will see this kind of graph, that is your capnography. Capnography, we are having certain uh, like phases, this is your phase 1, this one is your phase in phase 2 there will be rise in the graph because now what is happening CO2 whenever CO2 is coming out from the lungs the graph will rise then there will be a plateau phase okay and then there will be decrease it will be decreasing because now inspiration has started okay now oxygen is going inside so that is your expiratory phase there will be plateau phase Okay. where do we measure ETCO2 levels at the end of phase 3 this one is phase 1 this one is phase 2 and this one is phase 3 that was a question asked where do we measure the levels of ETCO2 we measure the levels of ETCO2 at the phase 3 okay so this is a normal capnography graph that we have seen in the in a normal intubation okay this one is shark shark fin appearance shark fin capnography graph this we have seen in partial obstruction partial obstruction agar hoga, then we will see the shark shark fin pattern okay 
partial obstruction can be due to bronchial asthma it can be due to bronchospasm okay just remember it as it is shark fin will be bronchial asthma or bronchospasm next thing will be this this uh, this notch is known as curare notch okay this notch is known as curare notch and this is indicative of return of spontaneous ventilation okay this is indicative of return of spontaneous ventilation now we, what we need to do someone is having like this kind of situation can we want to continue the surgery we can uh, again give the dose okay we can repeat the dose so this is indicative of the return of spontaneous now the patient is uh, trying to ventilate himself ki uske lungs khud ke kaam karne then you will see the curare notch okay third one will be this is above the baseline okay this is this is from the baseline this is from the baseline but here it is above the baseline above the baseline graph we will see in baseline graph we will in the cases of co2 rebreathing okay above the baseline graphs will be seen in the cases of co2 rebreathing whenever the patient is rebreathing the co2 then we will see the above the baseline graph okay yahan par kya hoga soda lime can be expired okay soda lime can be expired or maybe there is a problem in the circuit okay so that is indicative of the above the baseline graph okay okay then answer this question a 40 year old patient is undergoing surgery under some anesthetic agents sudden suddenly during surgery his etco2 values crossed 100 mmhg with high temperature of the body what could be the possible reason for this scenario except we will discuss the doses of nmb we will discuss okay answer this question a 40 year old patient in uh, is undergoing surgery under some anesthetic uh, agents suddenly during surgery his etco2 value crossed 100 mmhg along with the high temperature of the body what could be the possible cause for this scenario that so first of all just uh, tell me the diagnosis what you are diagnosing someone is undergoing surgery the normal value of etco2 is normal value of etco2 is 35 that will be now it is doubled is doubled so it will be doubled in the cases of malignant or terminal it will be doubled in the case of this is the diagnosis malignant hyper terminal okay here look the temperature of the body is also high right so the patient is having malignant hyper terminal okay so what are the agents that can cause malignant hyper terminal hello thin yes or no succinylcholine yes or no isoflurane yes or no propofol okay so all the inhalational agents all inhalational agents can cause malignant hyper thermia malignant thermia okay except yes propofol propofol is the iv agent okay succinylcholine is also known for malignant hyperthermia why it is happening like why malignant hyperthermia is happening what is the meaning of malignant hyperthermia look here guys uh, there is a receptor known as rhinodine receptor okay if there is mutation of rhinodine receptor then what will happen there will be increased the rele release of increased release of calcium and due to that calcium what will happen there will be increase in the levels of contractions in the body wherever there will be going uh, calcium that will be increasing the contractions in the body yeah? okay and due to that contraction what will happen there will be hyperthermia okay how do we treat it what is the treatment the answer will be propofol propofol is safe okay how do we treat it guys we treat it with the help of a drug known as sodium dantrolene sodium dantrolene okay sodium dantrolene is a drug that we are using iv how we are using iv sodium dantrolene okay so this is about the 
malignant hyperthermia okay so now we have seen about the monitors now the patient is looking at the machine there is a machine what is that machine that is your anesthesia machine what are the parts of the anesthesia machine that we need to discuss majorly they are having three parts this one is high pressure system this one is intermediate pressure system and this one is low pressure system okay this monitor we are talking about the patient is looking at this monitor okay second thing there are some vaporizers these are vaporizers okay we will study okay we will open it and uh, then we will study okay this one is your high pressure system this one is your intermediate pressure system this one is your low pressure system what is the basic function of anesthesia machine why we are using anesthesia machine the basic function of anesthesia machine is to decrease the pressure okay pressure of cylinder pressure of cylinder okay there are multiple multiple tubes in the anesthesia what will happen A cylinder is coming for example 2000 psi okay oxygen cylinder 2000 psi how uh, at this pressure our lungs will like burst okay so we need to decrease the pressure okay but with the help of like multiple multiple tubes what will happen the pressure will be decreased okay second thing second function will be to mix the anesthetic drugs in known concentration in known concentration okay in known concentration we need to mix the drugs okay kaun sa drug kitna dena hai that will be decided you can decide it with the help of anesthesia machine okay okay so let's talk about one by one the important part of the high pressure system okay so first will be high pressure system the high pressure system we need to look for the there are multiple parts need to remember about the pin index safety system okay why we need pin index safety system kyun chahiye We need a pin index safety system <clears throat> what is the function of pin index safety pin index se kya hoga? there will be uh, to prevent the pin index safety system to prevent the incorrect attachment okay, incorrect attachment of cylinder to prevent the incorrect attachment of the cylinder and to easily identify the uh, like color of the cylinder as well earlier it was like color coded but like some people are like maybe they are color blind or maybe they are making mistakes by themselves so uh, we have uh, developed a system that is known as pin index safety system that means a particular cylinder will uh, fit on the particular pin okay for example if you want to give someone oxygen you cannot give nitrous oxide nitrous oxide is a laughing gas right but you cannot give because uh, the pin index system <clears throat> is preventing the incorrect attachment right so that is your pin index system this is uh, the color of cylinder we need to remember the color of cylinder from where the questions are coming from the color of the cylinders and uh, from the pin index okay so <clears throat> this one is your black body white shoulder will be very nice oxygen cylinder okay that is your oxygen cylinder second thing will be blue cylinder will be blue blue matlab neela neela matlab n2o okay nindi neela matlab n2o nitrous oxide that will be blue in color and this one is orange orange the meaning of orange in hindi is santra that will be c4 cyclopropane okay so that will be cyclopropane that's revise uh, one by one first thing will be air second thing will be oxygen third thing will be nitrous oxide carbon dioxide cyclopropane antonox okay so the color of air black body and shoulders with black and white quarters okay air ka pin index kaise aat karing that's revise the pin index air second thing will be oxygen o2 third thing will be nitrous oxide okay, you can remember like that here you can write co2 cyclopropane open how to remember this guys a is 1 just write down 5 so it will be 1 5 
oxygen is 2 so just write down 2 5 and 2 o this is 3 okay 3 molecules so it will be 3 5 okay c is looking like 6 okay so just write down 6 all these 3 6 just write down 6 if it is uh, more than 7.5 percent it will be 1 if it is less than 7.5 percent it will be 2 and cyclopropane will be automatically 3 and you can count the number of antonox 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so pin index of antonox will be so 7 okay color you can remember there is n2o and oxygen that is n2o and oxygen that is n2o plus oxygen n2o you know the color will be blue and oxygen will be white shoulder okay so blue body and shoulders with blue and white quarters so that will be your antonox cyclopropane i have told you that will be santra okay santra will be cyclopropane that will be orange okay the uh, carbon dioxide it is like pollution pollution is like gray 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 okay so that will be carbon dioxide next thing is nitrous oxide nitrous oxide will be blue and last this one is your oxygen black body and white shoulder air will be black body with black and white quarters okay so that will be your high pressure system okay this will be having highest pressure okay next will be intermediate pressure system in this pressure system we are having diameter index safety system this we will discuss about this okay diameter index safety system two more things we need to remember there is emergency oxygen flush it is present in the intermediate system and flow control valve okay they are color coded valves they are nothing but your color coded valves emergency oxygen flow flush it will be uh, delivering oxygen at a speed of 35 to 70 liters of oxygen at a 55 to 60 psi okay the pressure is intermediate here okay earlier in high pressure there will be 2000 psi here will be 55 to 60 psi okay in diameter index safety system the uh, like we are having multiple multiple uh, tubes in the ot okay in the ot we are having multiple tubes you have seen like uh, uh, tubes are there so can you identify like in which tube uh, which color tube what is going on so for air just remember air will be air will be black air anywhere will be black okay vacuum will be v is looking like y so it will be yellow okay oxygen will be it is important so it will be white and n2o will be same that is your nila that is your two okay so yadua air will be black vacuum will be yellow oxygen will be white and n2o will be blue right so these are the uh, these are the diameter index safety system diameter index safety system particular particular diameter uh, of the tube will be fitting in the particular chamber okay so that is your diameter index safety system to try to put oxygen in place of nitrous oxide it won't happen okay there is different different types of diameters are there okay in low pressure system in low pressure system we are having two things remember first thing flow meter here we have studied about the flow control valve here we are having flow meters okay they will indicate the flow of gases okay and second thing will be vaporizers okay vaporizers will be there so that will be your four main vaporizers that we need to study why do we need vaporizers we need vaporizers because at room temperature was at room temperature they are in the form of liquid okay anesthetic agents they are in the form of liquid so we need to boil it up with the help of vaporizers so we are having different different kind of vaporizers okay you can remember hello thin we are having hello Isofluorine, evofluorine, and desfluorine. These are your inhalational agents. Okay, these are your inhalational agents, and we are requiring different colors of vaporizers. Okay, so halo will be red in color. Halo will be red in color. Isofluorine will be purple. You need to remember this okay sevo sevo is like sun sun is yellow okay so sevo and d for uh, 
d will be okay so d will be blue one thing you can notice all these three vaporizers are looking same but this one is different blue vaporizer is for the dash fluorine and we use a special vaporizer for dash fluorine that is known as tac 6 vaporizer okay what is the name of this vaporizer that is your tac 6 it is a pyq okay hello will be red iso will be purple sebo will be yellow and dash fluorine will be blue okay okay can you can you solve this question blue pipeline but uh, supplies cat or carries like uh, which of the following game blue blue mein konsa hoga in blue there will be which case that is your nitrous oxide okay oxygen will be oxygen will be oxygen is important right so it will be white okay air will be next air will be black okay vacuum will be yellow b is like white very nice fatima very nice jay gopal avnish dr murphy okay wonderful <clears throat> Okay, let's revise, let's revise everything, whatever we have studied till now, we need to revise it. Okay, revision is the key, guys. Revision is the only key by which you can remember. So, first thing we have studied about the introduction part. Okay, sabse pehle kya dekha tha? we have seen the introduction part, then we are moving on to different, different types of anesthesia. We have seen general, regional and local anesthesia. Then we have studied about the pre-anesthetic checkup. The patient is going for the pre-anesthetic checkup. Then we have studied about the intubation part. Okay, in intubation, we need laryngoscope, three more things. We need tubes, ET tubes, uh, laryngeal mask airways, and adjuncts. Okay, then we have studied about the monitors, five mandatory monitors, two more monitors we have seen. Okay, and uh, one is central line and another one is swan gans. Okay, then we have studied about the anesthesia machine. Okay, anesthesia machine there, it has three parts. First one is high pressure, second one is intermediate pressure, third one is low pressure system okay in high pressure system we have studied about the cylinders color of cylinders and pin index system second thing we have studied about the intermediate system in intermediate system we have seen the diameter index safety system the colors of the tubes and the third thing will be low pressure system in low pressure system we have seen the vaporizers okay the colors of vaporizers allothane will be very good red okay iso will be purple sebo will be yes yellow and Best fluorin will be blue. Very nice. Okay. Now we have seen the anesthesia machine is there. We have seen that uh, like we have understood about the intubation as well. Now we need to connect the patient with the anesthesia machine, right? For uh, providing anesthesia, we need to connect our patient. Right? So patient kaise connect karoge? How do we connect our patient with the help of some circuits, right? So we need to study about the circuits. What are the types of circuits uh, we are having? Basically, we are having three types of circuits. These are your open circuit. First one is your open circuit. Second one is your semi closed. And third one is your closed circuit. Okay, teen tari ke ke circuit ho. Open circuit will be like you are putting some gas. Okay, just say chloroform lagaya or sula diya. That is your open circuit. Okay, that is your open circuit. The drug is pouring directly, directly on the directly on airway okay for example let's see ether we use that how do we use that thoda 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 ether girate do okay that is that is how we are using or you can say chloro but we don't use it now okay semi close will be your mapleson circuit क्या बोलते हैं इनको दीज आर दीज सर्किट्स आर नोन एज मेपलसन सर्किट्स ओके द क्लोज सर्किट विल बी सर्किट सिस्टम सर्कल सिस्टम Circle. Those circuits will be circle system. Okay, guys, look here. Mapleson will be semi closed. So these circuits are portable circuits. Closed circuit will be only present in the like uh, OT. Okay, so most commonly used circuit is Mapleson circuit. We are different, different kind of Mapleson circuits. The function of circuits will be connection of anesthesia machine to tubes, right? Or two patients, right? 
ओके सो वी आर हैविंग सेमी क्लोज सर्किट दिज आर नोन एज मेपलसन सर्किट वी आर हैविंग मेपलसन ए बी सी डी ई एंड एफ ओके मेपलसन ए जस्ट रिमेंबर लाइक दिस ए फॉर अलोन एंड इफ सम इज अलोन दैट विल बी स्पॉन्टेनियस That will be breathing spontaneously. Okay, spontaneously का मतलब क्या होता है I will be breathing like right now we are breathing spontaneously. That is your spontaneous ventilation. Okay, खुद से कर रहा है Okay, this is also known as Maggie circuit. अकेला होगा तो क्या खाएगा What you will make when you are alone? Maggie. Okay, you can remember like that. It is also known as Maggie circuit. Okay, B and C are like not so important. B C is not so important. Okay, D is your D will be dependent. Okay, D will be dependent. okay it will be dependent on the others okay so that will be utilized for the controlled ventilation okay controlled ventilation d will be we are using d circuit on the controlled ventilation okay next one is your e e is also known as ayers tps okay but this is your bagless this is your bagless this is your valveless circuit so it is uh, like not usable okay it is not a good circuit so we have modified it okay uh jackson reese was a scientist he modified uh, the ayers tps and he he developed the jackson reese modification of ayers tps that is circuit f okay and circuit f is the circuit of choice in pediatrics in pediatric age group patients the circuit of choice for anything will be jackson reese modification of ayers tps okay ye kaisa dikhta hai it is looking like this isne kya kiya isme ye add kar diya okay reservoir add kar diya isne Here we added the reservoir. Okay, let's talk about Maggie's. Maggie's modified Mapleson A. Okay, it is also known as Lex circuit. Its ka modification was Maggie's ka. So we have got the modified Mapleson A that is known as Lex circuit. Okay, or also called as coaxial Mapleson. Okay, this one is your Bain circuit. E wala jo apne modify kiya that is your Bain circuit or coaxial Mapleson D. Okay, coaxial Mapleson. कैसे आइडेंटिफाई करोगे दोनों को इफ देर इज अ ट्यूब इन साइड अ ट्यूब यहां पर क्या डबल ट्यूब इज देर ओके सो दैट इज योर पेन सर्किट ओके वी आर करंटली इट इज लाइक यूनिवर्सल सर्किट वी आर करंटली यूजिंग पेन सर्किट फॉर एवरीथिंग लाइक मोस्ट ऑफ द थिंग्स वी आर यूजिंग पेन सर्किट ओके सो दीज आर द सेमी क्लोज सर्किट ओके लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द क्लोज सर्किट सिस्टम ओके क्लोज सर्किट सिस्टम वन मोर थिंग दिस इज द This is the circuit of choice for spontaneous. Yeah, we have done. This is the circuit of choice for spontaneous ventilation, and this is the circuit of choice for controlled ventilation. Okay, controlled. Am I correct? Okay. Uh, moving on to next. Next is your closed circuit. In closed circuit, was what is happening? Everything is in a closed loop. Okay. Closed loop में सब कुछ nothing is going out. ओके यहाँ पर वेस्टेज क्या होगा द वेस्टेज ऑफ द गैसेज विल बी डिक्रीज ओके फर्स्ट थिंग विल बी देर विल बी ए सी ओ टू एब्जॉर्बर ओके इसमें क्या करते हैं दे आर एडिंग सी ओ टू एब्जॉर्बर ओके लुक यर दिस इज अ क्लोज सर्किट और सर्किल सिस्टम ओनली वन ट्यूब सर्व फंक्शन ऑफ बोथ इंस्पिरेटरी एंड एक्सपायरेटरी लिम ओके वट आर द थिंग्स दैट वी आर यूजिंग इन द सी ओ टू एब्जॉर्बर दीज आर योर सी एन एस के यू कैन रिमेंबर लाइक दैट सी इज फॉर calcium hydroxide n is for sodium hydroxide we are using silica and potassium hydroxide most in the uh, highest concentration it is your uh, calcium hydroxide okay this is your soda lime soda lime the function of soda lime will be it will be absorbing the absorbing the co2 okay kya ho raha hai look here what is happening here the gas is coming from the one side and the gas is going back on the same side it is a single tube which uh, in, that is your inspiratory limb this is your expiratory limb okay you are inspiring oxygen you are leaving co2 but that co2 is here it is at the machine okay that co2 is being filtered with the help of co2 absorber and again the same gas so it is a economical circuit but we cannot portable it is not portable right so we can use it for like ot but uh, we cannot use it for like for portable okay so look here guys the question says a 5 year old child is spontaneously breathing and is undergoing is going under minor elective surgery 
ओके विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग सर्किट कैन बी द सर्किट ऑफ चॉइस बताओ ऑफ द फॉलोइंग सर्किट वुड यू लाइक टू यूज इन चाइल्ड इज गोइंग अंडर इलेक्टिव सर्जिकल प्रोसेस Okay, guys. I have told you that will be Jackson Reese circuit. Okay, this is your Mapleson A. This is your Mapleson E, right? So the answer will be Mapleson S. I S T piece modification is Jackson Reese circuit. Okay, I S T piece modification is Jackson Reese. This is your E. It will be modified to Jackson Reese circuit. Okay. So for pediatric, the circuit of choice will be Jackson Reese circuit. Okay. Now we are done with the circuit part. Uh, let's move on to anesthetic agents or drugs. Okay, and for that we need to again revise the again revise the same things. Like what are the different different kinds of anesthetic agents that we are having? We need to revise. It. Okay, the so first one will be general anesthesia. Second one will be regional anesthesia, and the third one will be local anesthesia. So we are having three types of anesthesia: general, regional, and local anesthesia. In general, we can use the drugs that are inhalational agents. We can use IV agents. Okay, we can use central neuroaxial blockade, and we can use peripheral neuroaxial blockade. Okay, we can use topical and infiltration. Look so here. In general, anesthetic drugs. We are having different different classes of drugs. In general, inhalational we will be uh, mostly using like uh, we can use methoxy and fluorine, all those things, but they are not utilized now. So we are using halothen. Just making a uh, short diagram. Uh, halothen, iso, isofluorine, sevoflurane, and desflurane. Okay, so these are your inhalational agents. IV agents that we are using are they can be opioids. They can be non opioids iv agents can be opioids and they can be non opioids opioids can be morphine what are the opioids that we are going to use and that is morphine we can use fentanyl rambifentanyl okay next thing is your non opioids non opioids will be propofol tomidate Thiopentane, ketamine. So these are the drugs that we need to study. Okay, this is your general anesthesia. In general anesthesia, we will be studying halothen, iso, sevo, des. In opioids, we will be studying morphine, fentanyl, remifentanyl. Non-opioids, we will be studying propofol, etomidate, thiopentane, and ketamine. Okay, for regional anesthesia, regional anesthesia is particular region. Okay. I can use central neuroaxial blockade. I can use peripheral neuroaxial blockade. But the drugs that we are using are your local anesthetic drugs. Okay, local anesthetic drugs. They are divided into two, two classes. First one, they can be amides or they can be ester. Okay, amides will be ignocaine, ubiquinone. Okay, ibuken. Okay, esters will be like cocaine, procaine, benzocaine. Okay, so these will be your local anesthetic drugs. In regional anesthesia, we guys are giving local anesthetic drugs. Okay, the last class will be we are using muscle relaxants as well. Okay, muscle relaxants. So muscle relaxants can be. Depolarizing muscle relaxant and non-depolarizing muscle relaxant. So depolarizing muscle relaxant, we are going to study about the succinylcholine. Okay, something like acetylcholine that is your succinylcholine. Non-depolarizing muscle relaxant, we are going to study about the. We are having two classes. 
they are having like curoniums okay. they are having like curares they will be studying like vacuronium brocuronium atracurium all those things okay so this is just a short short introduction okay so that will be the anesthetic drugs that we are using the anesthesia okay guys let's take a uh, let's take a break of like uh, 10 minutes and then just take a break of five minutes and then we will be starting again okay much minute okay five to ten minutes that will be fine and uh, like we are done with the half of the anesthesia so half uh, like more than half of the anesthesia so it will be completed within uh, one and 1.5 hours so we will start at uh, 7.50 start
स्टार्ट नाउ Are you guys learning something? Guys, let's start. So first thing will be. First thing will be uh, inhalationally. Okay, <clears throat> starting off with the. Let's revise this again. Now, since we have uh, seen all the structures, all the things, now we will be uh, revising. All the anesthesia. Okay, so first thing will be general anesthesia. Second thing will be regional. Third thing will be topical anesthesia. In general anesthesia, the drugs that we are using will be inhalational agents or IV agents. Right? We have seen the four steps earlier. We have seen the four steps. First will be pre oxygen. Then we need to induce the patient. Then we need to maintain the patient, and then we need to reverse the patient. Right? So uh, all those things will be repeated again. Okay. Now we need to. Know the drugs. What are the drugs that are causing all those things, right? So first thing will be inhalational agents. We are having like different kind of inhalational agent. First thing will be, look here. We are having nitrous oxide. Remember, I told you uh, there was a scientist who who tried to use uh, nitrous oxide for swells, for swells, right? Second thing is your inert. Inert substance is your xenone. Xenone is a inert substance. Third thing, these are not used. Which are not used. methoxyfluorine and fluorine ether and chloroform there is like highly highly uh, flammable okay so we cannot use in like uh, for surgeries right so we need to see for the uh, we need to see for the inhalational agents okay so first thing will be halothane second will be iso third will be co and the last one will be s fluorine okay halo iso co s first thing we need to see for the mac and potassium okay what is mac mac is minimum alveolar concentration okay mac is inversely proportional to potency okay so the mac of halothane will be 0.75 iso i can remember like that iso is like 1 okay co i can reverse the s it will look like 2 okay and this one is s okay so uh, the maximum maximum uh, maximum the mac or uh, minimum will be the potency okay so here the most potent will be halothane but uh, the mac of uh, methoxy is uh, more than halothane uh, uh, the mac of uh, methoxy is less than uh, halothane okay so it will be like more potent this is the order of potency okay so methoxy fluorine will be most potent then halo then iso then co then des and the mac of nitrous oxide will be 104 okay that is 104 <coughs> understood next thing is your blood gas solubility okay blood gas sol solubility is inversely proportional to the speed of induction okay so whenever a drug is more soluble in the blood it will remain in the blood right whenever drug is less soluble in the blood it will be going to cns and it will be working fast okay it will be producing unconsciousness fast okay so the levels will be hello thing is 2.25 iso is 1.3 co is 0.63 and des is 0.42 okay so the blood gas solubility of uh, des fluorine is least so it will be more potent okay so the more uh, more speed of induction okay so fastest will be s fluorine then co then iso and then halothane okay the order go reverse right <clears throat> next thing one by one about all those uh, the important points first one will be your halothane okay the function of halothane and uh, where we are uh, where it is agent of choice and where we are contraindicating right so it is contraindicated in hepatic surgery why it is contraindicated in hepatic surgeries anyone because it will be producing autoimmune hepatitis okay so halothane can produce autoimmune hepatitis so that is why it is contraindicated in hepatic surgeries in neuro surgeries it is also contraindicated the reason being it will increase the icp okay all inhalational agent increase icp but this will increase icp highest amount okay so that is why we are We are avoiding it. Okay. Next thing is the agent of choice for respiratory surgeries because it is a good bronchodilator. Bronchodilator. Okay. So these are the functions uh, that has been asked in the uh, examination. So halothane will be contraindicated in hepatic neuro surgeries. Halothane will be agent of choice for respiratory surgeries. Reason being, it is a 
recruit bronchodilator right <clears throat> second thing will be isoflurane iso iso is like heatant okay there is a uh, important thing that you need to remember about isoflurane is your it will show you coronary steel phenomena also known as reverse robin hood phenomena what it will do reverse robin hood phenomena what it will do it will be like uh, taking the blood from the places where it is not required right for example if this is the artery and we need to send the blood here but what will happen this will divert the blood okay again to the different artery wherever it is required it will not send it will send wherever not required right so that is your coronary steel phenomena third thing will be sevo fluorine sevo will be as for sevo as for sweet smell okay if it is a sweet smell we can use as a induction agent of choice induction agent of choice in children ha use kar sakte inko bachcho mein okay if you try to put a iv cannula to the children they will they will like kick you right so we can just put the mask and sevo is sweet and smell so it can be used as an induction agent of choice okay it will produce a compound that is nephrotoxic okay it will produce a compound that is nephrotoxic along with like soda lime it will react with the co2 absorber and it will produce a compound so in kidney or we, we, we would like to avoid it okay next thing is your desflurane desflurane is a irritant but we have seen the speed of desflurane is fast right so we can use it for the obese patient okay kaun sa patients mein use mein karenge we can use it in the obese patients okay and this is the maintenance agent of cho clear so we have seen the uh, four inhalational agents first one is your halothen second one is your iso sevo third one and the fourth one is your desflurane okay now moving on to next first gas is nitrous oxide and second one is your like phenone okay nitrous oxide will be the mac of nitrous oxide is 104 blood gas solubility is 0.45 it will act as a analgesia we cannot solely use nitrous oxide for the purpose of anesthesia okay nahi use kar sakte because mac is too much 100% se zyada kya doge right so we can use it for the analgesia purpose but uh, there are some contraindication it can cause uh, peripheral neuropathy there are some side effects like it can cause megaloblastic anemia bone marrow depression and it will expand the pressure in the cavities so agar koi cavity wala apan ko karna hai to we try to avoid the and to okay xenon is a gas xenon is like x okay uh, so the mac of x will 70 and blood gas solubility is very high this is a very very nice very uh, ideal thing but uh, this is not available in the market this is very costly and uh, ideal this is inert we can use it for analgesia purpose as well so this is all about the inhalational agents what we have studied in the inhalational four inhalational agents are the uh, most at four most importance first one is your halothen second one is iso third one is your sevo and the last one is your desflurane okay halothen will be red in color we have seen the vaporizer colors red iso will be purple sevo will be yellow and the last one will be blue in color right so after the inhalational agents we are moving on to iv anesthetic agents iv i have told you they are divided into two classes first one will be first one will be those agents which are opioids okay first agents will be opioids opioids will be like morphine ramifentanil fentanyl okay so these will be the opioids. they are utilized for the functioning of analgesia analgesia matlab kya karenge ye they will take away the pain okay but they can be used as an anesthetic agent in the some cases like for example someone someone is uh, like uh, having cardiac surgery so this will be cardio stable this will be very cardio stable opioids will be cardio stable but they are respiratory depressant kya hoga cbs mein to acha kaam karenge but they will depress the respiratory system right non opioids ki baat karunga non opioids will be four okay first one is your thiobentane second one is your propofol third one is your etomidate and the last one is your ketamine okay so these four we need to study first one thiobentone propofol etomidate and ketamine one by one all of them this one is your thiopentone thiopentone belongs to which class thiopentone belongs to class of barbiturate is a barbiturate right so 
so it will be looking like a yellow powder and it will be utilized in the narco analysis as well what is narco analysis guys anyone movies they get you have seen like movies someone is coming and injecting something okay injection laga then the patient will start uh, telling all the truths right all the truths so that is your narco analysis what we are doing basically we can use popolamine or truth serum like have pentone basically they are decreasing the cognition of the person and if the cognition of the person is decreased he can like uh, he will whatever he he knows he will he will just uh, reveal right so this is the fastest agent 11 to 14 uh, second it will take the brain brain arm circulation okay and it is contraindicated this is very important two times question asked it is contraindicated in porphyria and bronchial asthma it is it will produce bronchospasm so it will be contraindicated in bronchial asthma as well thiopentone okay next thing will be propofol propofol you can remember x you can remember like egs okay x e4 egg lecithin so if someone is having allergy from the x we we won't use it okay second thing will be second thing will be your uh glyce roll g4 glyce roll and third thing will be soya bean okay soya bean so these three things are uh, added to propofol propofol is a milky white milky white in color okay and it is an agent of choice in multiple situations for example malignant hyperthermia we have seen the drug of choice for malignant hyperthermia we will use iv agents okay next thing it will it will be utilized in the antiemetic antiemetic matlab kya hoga it will decrease the emesis okay next thing neurosurgeries liver and kidney surgery ultimately takes agent of choice for daycare surgery means uh, the patient is coming in the morning he will be operated uh, during the day and the evening the patient is going home right so that is your daycare surgery in daycare surgery the agent of choice will be propofol okay so this is what you should remember about the propofol the most important thing it is contraindicated in stock okay propofol is the agent of choice daycare surgery but it is indicated in stock Next, we have to study about the etomidate. This one is it. Two important points we need to remember about the etomidate. First one, this one is the cardiostable. Okay. All the other IV agents, all these three, like uh, thiopentane, propofol, ketamine, the best best cardiostable agent is etomidate. All others are cardiovascular unstable. This one is CVS unstable. This one, they are not stable. Okay. Second thing. Most important thing that is your it will produce a side effect that is known as adrenal suppression. There will be adrenal suppression. So etominate we need to remember two important things. First thing it is a cardio stable drug. Second thing it can produce adrenal suppression. Next thing is your ketamine. Ketamine ketamine is the best bronchodilator. Pancyclidine class matter. This one is in classes of pancyclidine. This is a sympathomimetic drug. Okay, this is an agent of choice. Agent of choice in multiple situations. Sympathomimetic drug. If it is a sympathomimetic drug, what it will do? It will activate the sympathetic nervous. System. So, if sympathetic nervous system is activated, utilized. Right. In the cases of shock, I want the sympathomimetic action. Right. Bronchial asthma. I want the sympathomimetic action. It is a very good analgesic. And this will produce a special, special kind of uh, thing that is known as dissociative anesthesia. That means the patient will feel like I am standing outside and like looking at surgery. The patient will be like awake and uh, whatever surgeries you are doing, you just watch him. Okay. So that is your dissociative anesthesia. That means brain is there. Where it is contraindicated, guys, this will be the mimetic, so it will be contraindicated in hypertension. Epilepsy, glaucoma. Okay. These are the things uh, we need to remember about the inhalation, uh, sorry, IV anesthetic agents. Okay. So, this is what we need to remember about the IV anesthetic agents. Next one is your local anesthetic agent. Local anesthetic agents, they will stop the transmission of the impulse. Yes, imp impulse ka transmission looking from the blocking the sodium channels. Okay. They will act upon the open sodium channel. Once the sodium channel open rega, they will go inside and they will block from the inside okay they will block the sodium channel then what will happen there will be no sensation there will be no working in the neurons right so basically we have already seen the two classes first one is your esters second one is your amides how to remember guys in amides there is i 
okay and if there is single i we can use 2i here this one will be 2i the book and all all these scans will be having 2i in esters there will be only single i that is your procaine procaine or chlorprocaine there will be only single i in amides there will be two i this is how you can identify whether it is a ester whether it is a amide okay in esters we have to remember about the cocaine procaine and chlorprocaine okay amides we are going to see lignocaine trilocaine vipivacaine and dibucaine so all these esters will be metabolized with the help of pseudo polynesterase enzyme what is the exception guys the exception will be exception will be cocaine okay what is the exception cocaine cocaine will be metabolized by very nice very nice hepatic hepatic metabolism this will be hepatic metabolism okay and all the amides will be metabolized by hepatic metabolism why it is important to know like uh, oh, this drug is metabolizing from the liver this drug is metabolizing from the kidney so that we can uh, we can plan our drugs okay someone is having like uh, liver failure then i i should avoid like giving halothin because i know halothin can precipitate autoimmune hepatitis so i should not uh, give halothin that is why it is important to understand right next thing is your cocaine okay so cocaine will be cocaine will be causing hypertension you know cocaine is a vasoconstrictor drug so it will be causing hypertension what is the shortest acting shortest acting cause of organ missing shortest acting shortest acting will be when chlorprocaine shortest acting will be chlorprocaine longest acting will be guys longest acting will be dibucaine d for tan you can remember that dibucaine which one is the safest safest sab tum tumne suna hoga you have heard about it safest will be Ignocaine. Okay, the most cardiotoxic. Which one is the most cardiotoxic? Most cardiotoxic will be cardiotoxic. You people. So these are the uh, local anesthetic drugs that we are using for the regional anesthesia, for the local anesthesia. Okay, and uh, there are some complications. Uh, what are those? Those complications are known as local anesthesia. systemic toxicity last local anesthesia systemic toxicity in cns or in pain we are having tinnitus okay and perioral numbness the first sign perioral numbness in cps it can precipitate arrhythmias and cardiac arrest this it can precipitate arrhythmias and cardiac arrest how will you treat last because a two times question you will treat last with 20% intralipid emulsion 20% intralipid emulsion will be treating the last okay. local anesthesia systemic toxicity next thing what are the uses they will be used in the topical i have told you about the topical there is a mixture known as eutetic mixture of local anesthetic amla okay this is your amla these are the patches okay look here these are the patches that we are using example i want to like section that is that area i can use the amla patch that is your local local anesthetic lignocaine and trilocaine what is in the amla there will be lignocaine plus trilocaine in the concentration concentration when asked uh, in the previous exam that is 1 is to 1 in 1 is to 1 ratio and that is 2.5% plus 2.5% right in infiltration in infiltration what we give we will inject the drug okay for example i want to give codel so in codel what i will do i will just go and i will inject the drug near term, terminal phylum there will be spinal nerves will what will happen they will accumulate there will be loss of pain okay we can use it for analgesia so this can be used filtration yeah for me if i want to block the brachial plexus i can i can the insulin drug okay local anesthetic wahan par dal dunga loss of sensation but if i want to surgery and if i want to i can block the brachial plexus then surgery right 
one to two hours it will be very easy next thing we need to study about the regionals we are done with the local anesthetic drugs what we are studying we are we, we are done with the analytical drugs we are done with the iv drugs we are done with the local anesthetic study general relational we have completed iv we have completed local anesthetics we have completed amides esters you know okay now the last one is the muscle relaxant before that we will be studying about the general anesthesia okay you guys are having like uh, it out you can ask me just need to revise it and in the regional anesthesia we will be central neuroaxial blockade central neuroaxial blockade there will be center okay we are having two things first one is the spinal anesthesia second one is the epidural anesthesia guys what is the basic basic difference in spinal and okay spinal is for like uh, short period of time let's say if i want to do the surgery for one to two hours i can use a spinal anesthesia if i want to like for example if there is a female i want to the delivery then i need the epidural anesthesia for like six seven hours like that okay so in spinal anesthesia the drug will be in the cs cerebrospinal it is a one shot technique this one will be continuous drug will be in the epidural state there will be high chances of toxicity because the drug is in the spinal fluid it can go in the whole cerebrospinal fluid right there will be more toxicity okay it will be fast it will be slow right it will be 1 to 2 hours and it will be for the 7 to 8 hours most important thing is the needles okay how you should understand about the needles okay the first thing will be tuhi needle this needle is tuhi needle kya bolenge isko tuhi needle there you, how you will identify there will be wings if there are wings they are look here there are markings okay markings are there then it is a tuhi needle tuhi needle is a epidural needle okay in spinal needle how you will identify there is no wings first thing there is no wings okay so that will be your spinal needle spinal needle can be twinky with care or it can be fruity okay ye dekho this one is your twinky with care or based on the types okay where they are opening based on the types now where uh, what is the pathway uh, there are questions from this also so we need to go to the same same place is for example we are starting spinal or epidural or we will be starting from the skin we will be going to subcutaneous or then we will to supra spinal tus ligament then we will be going to inter interspinous ligament and then ligamentum flavum okay this one is your skin in ke baad mein subcutaneous fascia will be there there will be supra spinal tus ligament there will be interspinous tus ligament and then there will be ligamentum flavum this is your spinous this spinous interspinous and this one will be ligamentum flavum okay now if i want to inject the drug in the epidural space i can directly inject the drug here this is your i can directly inject the drug here in the epidural space okay so after ligamentum uh, flavum i can directly inject the drug into the epidural space okay below this will be dura epidural means above the dura okay there below this will be dura mater then there will be arachnoid mater and then there will be subarachnoid and then last one will be pia mater okay here you you won't find pia mater this will be your csf okay last thing will be your csf so if you want to give spinal you will be injecting your drugs here if you will be giving epidural you will be injecting your drugs here okay so for the part two first thing will be subcutaneous fascia second thing will be supraspinatus ligament third thing will be infraspinatus ligament ligamentum flavum and epidural space then you will go for spinal dura mater arachnoid and subarachnoid right clear so what are the complications of like regional anesthesia kya kya complications for example the first thing will be hypotension hypotension how do you that hypotension if there is bradycardia ट्रबुक्ट 
So what are the contraindications like uh, when we should perform epidural or spinal? Yeah. These are your infections. If there is uh, raised ICT, if there are heart disease in the patient. Okay. If having heart disease, then the regional spinal or Next one is your labor analgesia. For labor analgesia, we can put an epidural catheter, catheter and what we will uh, inject the drugs. So, like for example, we can use LN opioid. This is the gold standard for. Okay, guys. So, till now we are done with the regional part also. Now, the last one is your muscle relaxant. Okay, muscle relaxant, kya hoga? There is a property of muscle, uh, like for example, if we want to uh, stimulate uh, muscle, we need to give us a specific amount. For example, if we stimulate something, it won't work. If we under stimulate the muscle, it won't work. We need a specific form, right? So, we are having two types of drugs, the blocker. The first one will be polarizing your blood blocker. Second one will be, guys, own deep blockers. Okay. So in depolarizing, we will be looking at the first thing that is your succinyl choline. How do you remember? We re remember with the name itself S for shortest acting. This is your shortest acting muscle relaxant. C for it is contraindicated in nerve and muscle injury. In nerve and muscle injury, there will be release of uh, like uh, a potassium and it will be detrimental, right? So we should not uh, use it in the nerve and muscle injury. Third thing H for hyperthermia which hyperthermia guys uh, we have seen that is your malignant hyperthermia so succinyl choline three things you should remember short acting mr contraindicated in nerve and muscle injury third thing will be can cause malignant hyperthermia right okay second thing it, it can also cause bradycardia okay it is very fastly metabolized uh, where do we use it we will use it in uh, rapid sequence induction and electroconvulsive therapy ect and difficult airway okay ECT, uh, ECT, or difficult airway and rapid sequence induction. Okay. In non depolarizing, we are having two two class. First one is your amino steroid. Second one is your benzoyl, benzyl isoquinolones. Okay. So benzyl isoquinolones and amino steroids. You can remember like no amino. There will be no. So there will be no. Okay. No matlab no. They must be having no in their name and. What is the significance of no here? All those, all these agents, all these agents will be secreting histamine. So those will be having no, they won't be secreting histamine. Okay. So pancuronium, no. Okay. So it won't be secreting histamine. Pancuronium, they won't be secreting histamine. And rocuronium, they won't be secreting histamine. So there will be no histamine release. They are cardiovascular stable and they can be utilized in liver and kidney as well. Okay. Second thing we need to remember why we are using like non depolarizing agents earlier. You know what what was happening uh, like uh, during during the older time uh, they are uh, taking the drugs with the atra curare or the, like curares is curares are there. They will inject the needle and then they will go it to the animals. Then what will happen whenever uh, the animal will be injecting atra curare or uh, like curares. What will happen to the animal? There will be massive mass of histamine that will lead to like the bronchospasm and patient will go into shock and he will ultimately die. Okay, so that was a needle poison. Okay. So these are your benzoyl, benzyl isoquinolones. Okay, so in me, what is first one is your atracurium, second one is your cis atracurium, and third one we, we need to remember is your viva curium. Okay, so they release histamine. They are CBS unstable and bronchospasm. Histamines means they will be doing bronchospasm, right? So these are the uh, two classes we need to remember. First one is your amino steroid. Second one is the benzyl isoquinolone. Okay. This atracurium and atracurium, like uh, they are, they are undergoing Hoffman elimination. Hoffman elimination. What is the meaning of Hoffman? That is a they are inactivating itself. You can say spontaneous inactivation of the that is your hope and elimination. 
they are safe in which cases so there they will be safe in liver and kidney disease because in liver and kidney disease they will be metabolized by themselves so okay, due to hoffman elimination they will be safe in the liver and kidney disease okay and about mevacurium mevacurium is the shortest acting okay. shortest acting is meva Right, guys. Next one is your reversal agents. Okay, now we are your neuromuscular block. Are your muscle relax. Nerve is sending some input. So we are blocking back. We are blocking back things. First one is your depolarizing. What depolarizing is? They will depolarize the muscle. They will contract the muscle so so much that now the muscle will not. Right. Second thing will be non depolarizing. They will be binding to the sides. There are two things. First one is amino steroids. Second class is enzyme isoquinolone. Amino, there will be no. So they will be vancuronium, vancuronium, pythagoronium. Okay. Okay. This one, enzyme isoquinolone. Pure RS. Okay. Pure RS. This atracurium, atracurium we have seen. Or uh, next we have seen about the evacuum. Now let's talk about the reversal agents, guys. Uh, so all these can be reversed. But uh, like all the non depolarizing can be reversed with the help of like neostigmine plus atropine. They are indirect. Okay? They will be uh, reversing the indirect. Okay? So, gamma dex is a direct reversal agent for procuronium and bicuronium. And calabidione is a direct agent for all non These are the reversal agents, guys. Can anyone answer me? Like whatever whatever we have studied till now, uh, we will be discussing in the short table. Uh, for heart disease, the agent of choice, IV agent. I have told you, etomidate is the IV agent of choice in the heart disease. Okay, it is CVS stable. Second thing I have told you, it will cause adrenal insufficiency. Just try to answer, guys. Okay, just try to answer wherever you are. Uh, just try to answer. I think there is a lag between. I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm ahead of you guys. So just try to answer wherever you are. Just try to speak. Okay. Second thing will be asthma. In asthma, ketamine. I told you ketamine is the best second best bronchodilator. In IV agent, ketamine is the best bronchodilator. Okay. Third thing in shock. Shock. I told you shock. What will be the answer in shock? In shock, the answer will be ketamine again. I told you it is a sympathomimetic, so it will be helpful in the shock as well. In daycare surgery, in daycare surgery, the agent of choice will be propofol. In neurosurgery, the agent of choice will be again propofol. Okay. Inhalational agents. Let's talk about inhalational agents. What do we prefer in heart disease? In heart disease, we prefer DES or ISO. Okay. Can use like simultaneously. Can use that best fluorine and isofluorine due to putting to availability, but both can be utilized, right? In asthma, in asthma and inhalational agent, what what I will use, which is uh, which inhalational agent is a bronchodilator, good bronchodilator. That is your halothane. Remember halothane. Halothane. Halothane will be a good bronchodilator, right? Third thing will be in the shock. The shock, what will happen? We can use desflurane. We can use ISO. For daycare surgery, we are using desflurane. Okay, desflurane for daycare. And neurosurgery, we can use isofluorine. Muscle relaxant for heart, we will be using novalin. Okay, NO. Vecuronium. So they won't be releasing any histamine. So that they will be good. Same, same, same is here. In asthma also, we will be using proniums. Okay, so there will be no stamine release, uh, there will be no bronchospasm, right? So asthma, we can also use this muscle relaxant. Third thing will be in shock, there will be we will be using pancuronium. Shock we will we will be using pancuronium and the uh, for daycare surgery we will be using mevacurium. What we are using? Mevacurium. That is a short shot. I have told you this is this one is a short shot. Or for neurosurgery, all of them are like good. Can use any of them, right? Muscle relax. 
friends now we are done with the anesthetic agents as well guys right? so, okay so now the topic will be oxygen delivery systems now we are going to study about the oxygen systems okay we are having two types of devices we are having low flow devices we are having high flow devices. okay whatever flow is coming uh, on the basis of that uh, according to the disease of the patient we are using requirement of the patient we are using like oxygen devices first we have to study about nasal cannula second is your simple face mask then your face mask with reservoir okay and in high flow de devices there will be venturi mask nebulizers hfnc that is high flow nasal cannula your ambu pad okay so there are two things we will study about first thing is your fio2 guys basic matlab kya hota hai what is the basic meaning of fio2 basic matlab kya hota hai fio2 matlab for example i am sitting here air is outside so out of that air i can i can take like 20% of the air only that is my fio2 okay now how much amount i want to give for example the amount of oxygen in a gas for example i am giving like multiple multiple that is the amount of the oxygen okay so for mild hypoxia hypoxemia what is the flow rate this is a flow meter you know uh, we have seen like open it like 10 10 liter 15 liters so here it's the note we can we can open it from okay, so this is the flow rate flow rate is how much gas is coming okay so flow rate will be for uh, nasal cannula they will be asked right in the they are asked smd as well okay so flow rate will be 2 to 6 liters per minute for mild hypoxemia 2 to 6 liters i will open that uh, 1 to 6 or 2 to 6 liters the fio2 will be he will be getting 24 uh, remember like that 24 percent of oxygen out of 100 or to, up to 45 percent of the oxygen out of 100 100 percent okay out of the whole gas 45 percent will be the oxygen the suit okay so that will be your fio2 second thing will be this is your simple face mask you need to identify the uh, mask here the flow rate will be 6 to 10 liters per minute and the fio2 will be 0.35 to 60 percent non-repeatable or breathable mask here the flow rate will be 6 to 10 liters and fio2 will be 0.6 to 0.7 and rbm the flow rate is more that is 10 to 15 liters per minute same fio2 will be 0.6 to point okay you should remember this is your venturi mask venturi mask is a high flow device uh, fio2 will be 100 percent okay 100 percent oxygen will be nebulizer you know nebulizer are utilized for the like to transform the liquid drug into breathable form now from drug dal and then it can be uh, inhaled in next one is your hfnc high flow nasal cannula device just see both of them are asked in the pyq okay these are your high flow nasal cannula of them are high flow nasal cannula so <clears throat> what is the function they will be providing heated and humidified gas okay and what is the fio2 from normal to like 100 percent oxygenation they can give the flow rate is higher flow rate will be 60 liter per minute right next is your bag and mask uh, bag and uh, valve <clears throat> bag and mask ventilation that is your <clears throat> mechanical ventilation like i have seen it uh, Pressing the wall that is your bag and wall and, and FIO2 will be 0.21. Okay, so these are the basic basic oxygen devices. And from last like last two years, there are about four to five questions. Table. Please, please revise it. Okay, moving on to next. Moving on to next, next is your fluids okay what are the types of fluids these are also asked in the exam like they have given the name of normosol or plasma light okay plasma light is also a pyq so they are basically crystalloid okay they are balanced solutions they are basically crystalloid this one is rl rl, RL you know and this one is ns <clears throat> okay so we are having two things first thing is your crystalloid second thing is your colloid so crystalloid there will be like crystals okay so its osmolality will be uh, similar to plasma 
okay for example let's say we are having like 0.9% of ns 0.9% sodium salt what what does this mean is the this is similar uh, it's osmolality that of plasma osmolality okay so that is your <coughs> crystalloid next thing is your colloid in colloid there will be there will be uh, two things uh, there are multiple multiple this is high concentrated solution and this will be just like the blood okay so we are having like albumin this is your albumin we are having dextran we are having like blood okay so these are your crystalloid these are your colloids there is a replacement ratio that is asked for example let's say if someone is going outside and he get a road traffic accident okay then what will happen he will come to opd and just tell me like if if he has lost like 1 liter of blood or just 2 liter of blood how you will manage you will put a, a large iv bore cannula that is orange color 14 gauge okay two large iv bore cannula and then you will try to replace the fluid how you will replace it if you are giving colloid then how much colloid you should give and if you are giving crystalloid then how much crystalloid you should give for the loss of like 1 liter 1 liter of blood you need to give 3 liter of 3 liter of crystalloid okay so this is in the ratio of 3 is to 1 and here it is in the ratio of 1 is to 1 okay so what are the crystalloids that you should know first one is your ns second one is your rl third one is your plasma light eh? and normosol and extra okay in colloid you will see blood albumin starch extra they are relatively thicker i just like the blood they will be given if one liter of blood loss is there one liter of albumin plasma blood. this is the function of albumin anyway right guys moving on to leg next that is your cardiopulmonary cerebral then ctr first thing uh, you need to look for is your basic life support okay first thing you need to look for basic life support whatever you are doing guys uh, just look here for the next 5 to 10 minutes we are going to not for like examination it is important for like for like your life you will be as a doctor you should know how to uh, deal with the ba so traffic accident sir wahan par ho ya sir wahi par someone is dying and then you should know how to treat it right so first thing will be bls bls the first thing you will do basic life support you will check the unresponsive the patient whether the person is unresponsive or not then you will see for the scene safety for example someone is lying down then you will see the scene safety for example there are mirror there are like glass or there are like blades so all those things you you need to see for the scene safety after seeing safety you will can check for the response patient you will tap him you will ask him sir i sir hello like that okay so you will try to wake him up okay then you will call for help then you will assess for the pulse and first thing you will check for the pulse you will put the carotid pulse you will put the carotid pulse if the pulse is present and the patient is present, but he is not breathing well okay he breathing is shallow, shallow. then what you will do you will put him in the left lateral position you will do you will put him in the left lateral position and then you will the ambulance second case scenario the pulse is present but there is no breathing okay pulse hai, but there is no breathing the patient is not breathing so what you will do you will need to give him breath right so every 10 second you will give him breath and then you will check for the every 2 minute you will check for the uh, pulse whether the pulse is there or it is also missing okay so you you need to check it again third thing will be pulse is absent and breathing is also absent so just give the basic life support now we will see the basic life support someone is lying on the road we will check for the pulse pulse is absent check for the breathing breathing is absent then you need to start the basic life support aise nahi hai ki jaate se ya start kar right you should not do so first thing will be bls in bls we will be circulation and then breathing right first thing will be starting of the chest compression chest compression first thing circulation chest compression how much chest compression you should 100 to 120 per minute 
from this also like uh, three to four questions then almost last year exam there is a question four to five questions are from this so just try to understand first thing how much compression 100 to 120 what should be the depth of uh, that you are giving uh, should give the five to six centimeter in the depth so it should be five to six centimeter the depth uh, don't look for the ribs and all those things just go five to six centimeter what should be the ratio the ratio should be 30 chest compression followed by two breath 30 chest compression followed by two breath chest compression and ventilation if there are any number of rescuers, 30 is too good. Adults may kya karna hai? 30 chest compression followed by 2 breaths. Okay, and we give 5 cycles of breath. Then we will feel the pulse. Okay, then we will feel the pulse again in the next 10 seconds. If there is no pulse, then we can again continue the EPI. Okay, this is your cardio pulmonary. Second thing is here. In pediatric patients, if there are 2 rescuers then then you should give 15 is to 15 chest compression then two ventilation if there is one rescuer then there will be 30 chest compression with two uh, two ventilations okay in infant we will use three is to one ratio and we can check the brachial pulse as well. in infant we can check the brachial pulse as well okay what should be the depth here there the depth will be five to six centimeter here the depth will be four to five centimeters and we will look for the carotid or femoral pulse. Now, what will happen, guys? We'll, we'll be waiting for the SELS. In SELS, doing guys, we'll be waiting for the AED. What is AED? You calling so AED will be automatic. You will put the PET device on the body. Then what will happen? <clears throat> in the screen, you will see whether the rhythm is stockable or non shockable. There are two types of rhythm. First one is stockable, second one is non shockable. Stockable rhythm, we need to press the button. Right? So it is will be pressing the button and it will be starting a charge of 200, 200 G. And then, then you will continue the in the five cycles of compression and ventilation start then feel the carotid pulse but if it is not shockable then you will continue the compression and ventilation five cycles again then feel for the carotid pulse okay now what will happen the sls team will come advanced cardiac life support first thing they will do they will um, cure the okay, and then same thing after securing the airway same thing will be done 100 to 120 uh, chest compression followed by 8 to 10 breath. Okay, Ambu wave use kar sakte. Okay, second thing is your kya karenge? They will be seeing the IV lines and they will be attaching the monitors and they will assess the rhythm as well. If it is shockable, again 100 joule charge will be given. If it is non shockable, again continue the uh, see. shockable rhythms are your uh, ventricular fibrillations, pulseless. Uh, Ventricular tachycardia and the, these are your stockable rhythm. The patient is stockable. Happen as soon as you charge, give the charge to the it normalize. Okay. Then you will need to give some drugs. These are your section first. The lean is the IV. Agar adrenaline one is to ten thousand. One is to ten thousand. That means one ml of adrenaline mixed with nine ml of Sodium saline that will be the concentration. Thousand. You need to give ten ml every three to four minutes. Okay. Section amiodarone. Amiodarone we can give three hundred mg IV. Then we will so loading those. Then we will maintain it with the one fifty mg IV. Okay. For non shockable rhythm, that is your asystole or pulseless electrical activity. <clears throat> we need to continue the chest compression and along with that we will be adding injection adrenaline in same dose and uh, 10 ml we, we need to repeat it every three to four minutes okay and for this this is told we need to find the cause the cause of the okay. 
to do this right we need to find the cause and then we need to treat it okay last one is your capnography capnography uh, we will look for the capnography after i see this team is arrived they have so we the capnography if the value is coming more than 20 that means it is a good compression or compressing if the value is less than that means the compressions are not effective and the value rising about like this spontaneous ventilation okay we will uh, we will need to continue the cpr for like 45 minutes and if uh, after continuing cpr for 45 minutes till the patient cannot be like uh, circulation is not restored the patient cannot be restored then we need to abandon the cp then we can abandon the cpcr okay so <clears throat> this was about the cpcr okay now please please try to answer important important one liner whatever you have studied uh, please try to answer the first thing which agent is not used in patients with egg allergy agar kisi ko egg allergy if someone is having egg allergy then uh, which agent should be avoided <coughs> answer which agent should be avoided that is your topo topo call remember we have studied eps Aglacithin, G4 glycerol, and soya bean oil. Okay, so if the patient is having egg allergy, should avoid propofol. Which of the following should not be used if open for more than six hours? कौन सा अपन को use में नहीं लेना if it is open for more than six hours? If it is open for more than six hours, that is again propofol. Okay, remember this guys, propofol should not be used if it is open for more than six hours. most common uh, agent used in daycare surgery that is also propofol guys okay which causes adrenal suppression adrenal suppression kaun se ne karwaya tha we have seen which of the following will be causing adrenal suppression that is your ketomidate Tomidate we have seen it is the agent of choice in CPA surgery but it is it we don't use it in adrenal suppression. Okay, most cardio stable IV agent same most cardio stable IV agent is tomidate that is your tomidate. Which of the following ag agents IV agents will be causing hallucinations and delirium? कौन सा करेगा hallucinations and delirium? Hallucinations and delirium is seen with so the fourth. That is your ketamine. Dissociative anesthesia we have seen. Dissociative anesthesia we have seen with the <coughs> ketamine. Most painful on IV injection. Which agent is most painful on IV injection, guys? Remember, uh, okay, please. It is painful. That is your propo. Basically, propofol is a type of alcohol. So, propyl alcohol. Best best bronchodilator IV. Which one is the best IV bronchodilator, guys? Again, we have studied ketamine, right? Ketamine is the best bronchodilator IV. <clears throat> second guess effect or diffusion hypoxia is seen with. Second guess effect or diffusion hypoxia is seen with N two O. That is your nitrous oxide. And which of the following agent is preferred for induction in children? That could be uh, like inhalational agent. Which of the inhalation That is preferred for induction. Oh, guys. Very good, very good. That is your sevo. Remember, I told you sevo is sweet, sweet in nature. Okay, so sevo fluorine that we can use for. <clears throat> okay, preferred for induction in asthma. Someone is having a 
rest of the code i will be customer rest from code editor i'm talking about in addition that is your hello thing right Preferred for induction in uh, neuro, cardiac, or liver surgery. Which of the following agents? These are the one-liners. Uh, these are basically the previous year questions that has been asked. In Just try to answer. This one is your isoflurendines. Isoflur. Okay. Preferred in induction in renal failure. Liver failure. That is your desflurin. Shortest acting neuromuscular blocker. We have seen depolarizing, non depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. So, shortest acting will be shortest acting depolarizing neuromuscular blocker will be succinyl choline. For S for shortest acting, okay, S for shortest acting. Shortest acting non depolarizing. Asking about the non depolarizing. Non depolarizing, what will be the answer? Remember, I told you about the Diva Curie, right? This is your Diva Curie. Next one is your fastest acting known polarizing. Fastest acting depolarizing. That category. <clears throat> we, are, we are having one thing that is Roperonin. So, just like a rocket, okay, it is fast like a rocket. Coronium is fastest acting rising neuromuscular blocker. Okay, and the last one is your Hoffman elimination. Hoffman elimination. All known. Refugee. This is a Refugee man. This is a So uh, this is all about the anesthesia guys out of this i think you if there are like 10 questions in the exam you will already definitely from this please try to revise it and the revision like we are completing it in i guess so let's do a quick review fast fast cut there but after what we have studied till now from the beginning till the end and then we will then I will I will be signing. Okay. This is what we are starting. From the beginning, whatever is happening, just in the form of a story. Yeah, I will send the PDF in the group. Sorry about that. Okay. So first thing will be introduction. In the introduction part, we have got the two things. First thing is the history. The history. Okay. History of anesthesia. From where it has begun. Second thing we have seen about the Second thing we have seen about the all those scientists names. and second thing we have seen about the components of anesthesia. Components of anesthesia, what why we are using anesthesia, what is the so balanced anesthesia. Okay, then we have seen the types of anesthesia. We are having three types of anesthesia. Now I think it is here with everyone. So you know now first one is general, second one is regional, third one is local anesthesia. Okay. General, there will be inhalational, there will be IV. Now you know the agents as well. Okay. Second thing will be central neurexial blockade. Whatever is in the central, that will be or your epidural anesthesia, your spinal anesthesia, portal anesthesia. Next thing will be your peripheral neurexial blockade. Here will be your brachial plexus, your sciatic block, your femoral block, your scaling block, whatever is there, that is your peripheral neurexial blockade. Okay. Last thing will be your local anesthesia, that is your topical. And second one is your infiltration, right? Clear till now. In topical, we are using umbla. Okay. That was question and question has been asked what was the constituents of amla eutetic mixture of local anesthetics kitna kitna percentage 2.5 2.5 percent right in infiltration we have seen how we are giving drug in infiltration there are four steps of anesthesia uh, pre-oxygenation second one induction third one maintenance and the last one is these are the four stages history we need to check for the drug history medication surgical history exposure history that we can give the uh, other drugs okay after history we will see for the general physical examination examination the most important will be asa grading okay grading will be important 
in grading grade 1 will be healthy patient grade 2 will be mild system grade 3 will be severe system disease limits activity grade 4 will be constant threat to life and grade 5 will be more event patient and grade 6 Red six will be organ harvesting, right? Emergency agar lag jata hai, that you know. Okay. Airway mein you need to remember about the malam pati grading. Malam pati grading is the difficult airway in right grade one, two, three, four are there. Three and four are considered as difficult intubation. In formic lehan grading we have seen about the difficult intubation again, but this is a laryngoscopic view. Laryngoscope kaun sa aadme pakana hai? Actually, the black friend you do like that. Okay. Next one, pre-anesthetic order. That means before, before like no treating, we do something to tell him that which, which drug he should continue on and which, which are the drugs that he should stop, right? So all those things will be considered in the pre-anesthetic order. Aspirin, we can continue. Clopidogrel has been asked. Diclopidine has been asked. And TCS has been asked, right? Lithium is also very important. Next, NPO. One question from NPO as well. Okay. In breast milk, we need to remember like four hours, others will be same for both. Okay, then the patient is coming for the operation, pre operative. For operation, we decrease the anxiety of the patient, we need to decrease the secretions of the patient, and we need to give the antibiotics to the patient. Okay, next thing will be we need to intubate the patient. Abhi patient aagya, what we need to intubate the patient for that, I will be requiring laryngoscopes and certain kind of other airway devices most importantly is your ET tubes okay these are your laryngeal mask airways and these are your ad in adjuncts we are having Goodell's airway and superangeal tubes ET tubes laryngeal mask airway how you will remember guys look here this one is your mechoi if there is lever that will be your mechoi if it is a straight blade it will be your pillars if it is a curved blade it will be your macintosh and the last one is the video laryngoscopy and fiber optic okay Supraglottic airway devices, what we have seen in supraglottic, that is your LMAs. LMAs, first one classical single, that handle is there, that means, agar handle hai to kya hoga? Fast track, fast track for ET tube. Okay, next one is your Pro Seal, Pro Seal we have seen. Next one is your Supreme, this one is your eye gel, or agar iske saath mein hai, that means it is a LMA arm. We have seen the basic ET tube, there was a question asked. Is on the Murphy's eye. Murphy's eye is present in uh, like ET tubes. Second one is your RAE tube. If it is facing upward. That is your fourth pole, fourth type. If it is facing downward, it is your south type. Okay. Make your end. That is your. This one is your north type. This one is your south type. Okay. Next one is your red rubber tube. Will be using in the CO2 laser surgeries. Flexometallic tubes. Uh, they are utilized in the surgery double lumen tube for uh, single lung ventilation this is stylate and this one is boogie okay, stylate can use me lena hai, boogie can use me lena hai, we guide the ET tube inside OP oropharyngeal devices they will be helpful in the airway to maintain the airway agar kis lung fall ho rahe, then need to put Goodell's airway so that we can prevent the uh, obstruction of the airway all right next thing we have seen the maneuvers some maneuvers that has been asked by Qs. That is first one is your head tilt chin lift, second one is your jaw thrust, and the third one is your telex man. Telex me kya karoge? Pressure doge trigon. All right. Next thing is your monitors, five monitors we need to remember is SPO2 monitor, third one is your NIBP temperature, and last one is the capnography. Capnography is the short, short confirmation of ET the trachea, right? So, you can remember that. After looking at the monitors, this is your your VIS, bispectral index. This is your neuromuscular monitoring. This is your central venous catheter. Okay, and this one is your swan gels catheter. Capnographic graphs we have seen. Start with pattern will be bronchospasm. Return of spontaneous ventilation will be curare clap. And above the baseline will be your this one will be your CO2 debriefing. Okay, after this we have seen about the anesthesia machine. With these three systems high pressure and low pressure system, high pin index, and your color of cylinder that is very important. One from this next one is your diameter index safety system, these are the color color coding to remember. Okay, third one is your low pressure system, this one is your deck, DC, all these three, and blue, pi uh, blue pipeline. So that is we have completed. Now, let's talk about the circuit. 
ओपन सर्किट क्लोज सर्किट सेमी क्लोज सर्किट मैपलसन ए इज फॉर अलोन ऑल्सो नोन एज मैगन सर्किट डी इज द यूनिवर्सल सर्किट यूनिवर्सल सर्किट we are using in the this one is the jackson so circuit we have seen the constitute friends you should remember what is the line okay next one after the circuit we have the drugs kya kya patient drugs we have three kinds of three types of drugs first one is your inhalational second one is your iv drugs third one is your la and the last one is the muscle relaxant इनहलेशनल में हेलो आइसो सी वो डेस्क पड़ा हम लोगों ने इम्पोर्टेंट मैक एन पोटेंसी मैक एन पोटेंसी एंड सेकेंड थिंग दैट इज इम्पोर्टेंट हाउ वी हैव सीन अबाउट द हेलो थेन एच फोर हेलो एच फोर बैटिक सर्जरीज एंड सर्जरीज एजेंट ऑफ चोइस इन सर्जरीज आइसो फ्लोरिन विल बी इरीटेंट एंड कॉरोनरी स्टीव ना दिस इज वॉट यू शुड रिमेंबर सीवो विल बी जस्ट लाइक सीवो विल बी लाइक दैट्स इन एंड प्रोमो डायलेटर एंड लास्ट वन विल एच फोर N2 and Z1 are like, but these are the supporting gases. N2 in second gas. One is your phenone and uh, IV anesthetic agents. Opioids. Opioids are generally used for the property of analgesic. We have seen the five components of uh, so analgesics will be provided by opioids, non opioids, thiopentane, propofol, etomidate, and ketamine. Okay, charo ham logon ne dekh liya barbiturate. This one is important for pyrrhea. Two times asked question. Adrenal separation, CVC table. You should remember this one. Is, uh, local anesthesia drugs. You should remember local anesthetic drugs. We are using the regional anesthetic, right? So that will be your regional as well. Esters and amides we have seen. Okay. Uses regional will be CN uh, spinal and epidural. We have seen. should remember the pathway of the spinal and. and uh, epidural and okay the complication regarding to contraindication labor and and muscle relaxant depolarizing non polarizing sorry mino steroids will be no procedure degradation and gamma dex is the muscle agent and calabidium so the questions that we have done is in the lebby system this is very important guys do guys it and after this <coughs> we are done with the fluids so it's called the last in the examination and uh, after this cpcr the current cpcr guidelines is operating uh, every time in this devices external defibrillators after that we have done some questions thank you so much guys for your revise and if you have any doubts say Instagram, Telegram. Do revise. I will share. I will share the PDF uh, the group. Uh, can revise it. Any.